or maybe one of those fancy places. Or you can go to Herfie's. They now serve a really great hamburger and a whole bunch of other sandwiches, too, with a free condiment bar and fresh-cut salads. So for friendly service, just walk up, sit down, or drive through. You'll always get good food quickly at Herfie's. RCA announces a major improvement in video cassette recording. Introducing Selectivision 400. Set it today, and for the next seven days, the 400 remembers the shows you want recorded. It'll turn itself on and off up to four times, even change channels. Selectivision 400, the four hour video cassette recorder with the seven day memory. Let RCA turn your television into Selectivision. You're watching KING TV, Seattle. NBC Sports presents the best of the National Football League, the American Football Conference. Brought to you by Chrysler Plymouth, who invites you to see the sporty Plymouth Arrow, Fire Arrow, and brand new Arrow Pickup for 79 by new Schlitz Light Natural Pilsner Beer, still less filling with a taste that's bigger than light. And by Hertz, the superstar in Brenda Car. This is Kurt Gowdy, John Brody, the Oakland Coliseum, Oakland, California, Seattle, 500 on the season, six and six. They beat Oakland in Seattle earlier, 27 to seven. Had Oakland shut out with just a little over four minutes to play in the game. Oakland is eight and four, leading right now in their division. And the march of the captain. There's the standing of the AFC West. Oakland will play Denver here, by the way, a week from Sunday, and they can't make the mistake of looking ahead to that one today. Let's watch the toss of the coin. Heads is the call. Tail. Oakland the winner. Want the ball. <laughs> Not very complicated, Kurt. Very simply, Gene Hupshaw says ball. They'll take the ball. They'll defend the goal on your left. The black-shirted Oakland Raiders. Seattle Seahawks will kick off from your right. And Patera will gather his club around him. You'll be seeing uh, two exact opposites on the sidelines today. Patera doesn't show much emotion. And Jod Madden will be kneeling, praying, running up and down, uh, kicking. He'll be doing everything out there. A highly emotional coach. And I think it points out how, how emotion is, is sometimes so, uh, uh, so befuddling because they're both highly emotional people. It's just the one has an awful, an awful lot of extrovert to him and the other one is a total introvert. Jack Patera may be, may be doing the best job in the National Football League this year, and I have never noticed the, that a coach who is six and six, he could finish the season over 500. I've never seen anybody with, with just an over 500 record uh, voted as coach of the year, but I think he's an excellent candidate. Hey, friend, Herrera will be kicking off. And uh, it's about a five mile an hour cross breeze right across the field. 23 is Harold Hart. 22 is Arthur Whittington. Hart just picked up again, used to be with the Raiders. He's drifted from club to club. Here's Herrera waiting for the referee signal. Another packed and jammed house here. Long string of sellouts in the Oakland Coliseum. And the kick is tumbling to Hart at the 8. 15 to the 20. 25. And he's spun down on the 26-yard line by Kerry Justin, number 26 of the Seahawks. So we'll set the Oakland Raiders up now. They'll be on their 26-yard line with a first down. Stabler, the quarterback. Whittington, the rookie, 22. Van Egan, number 30, are the running backs. And there are the wide receivers. Cliff Branch, 21. 81, Brad Shelby on the other side. Dave Casper, 87. Sometimes the Raiders will have Belitnikoff in with a three-wide receiver attack. John will run down the offensive line for you. Kenny Stabler, 57% completions this year to Whittington. Whittington out to the 30. And 
and he scrambles to the 34-yard line where John Harris, the free safety, made the tackle. Oh, they get eight on the first play. There's the offensive line, a great one. And the only change is Steve Sylvester. He's been there for four years. He has never started a ball game in the offensive line for the Raiders. However, they look at him as one who could play any one of three positions. He backs up Dalby and Upshaw. They haven't had a need. And this year, there seems to have been more offensive linemen going down than ever. Surprisingly, Seattle opens up with a 3-4. Three, three down linemen, four linebackers. Van Egan for first down to the 39. And uh, he's hit by Terry Beeson and Keith Butler, the two linebackers. Now that's a four-man front, but they've gone to a three-man front. They have Ernie Price, Dennis Boyd, and Bill Gregory up there with the linebackers. Green, Beeson, Peter Cronin, 57, and Butler, a rookie, 53. First down. And now they've gone back to four. Now they jump back to the four-man <laughs> line. Whittington on the sweep. He is sliced under by number 38, Cornell Webster, the left cornerback, and by the left linebacker, Sammy Green. Cornell Webster making the stop curve kind of exposes Morris Bradshaw, who's been doing an outstanding job blocking for wide sweeps, and Whittington is the first guy that's run any for Oakland in quite some time, is a very integral part of their offense. That time, Cornell Webster got behind him and made the play. Anasak has replaced Van Egan. Second down, seven for the Raiders. Their 42-yard line. Whittington, they're trying to get outside with Whittington. Whittington's over the 45 to the 46-yard line. Terry Beeson met him there. Arthur Whittington weighs only 180. Seventh round pick. They didn't think he might last, but he's not only lasted, but become a starter. They've had two backs go down. Clarence Smith, Robisky with knees. And the reason that, that Winnington may be as, as important an increment today as he could be is that Terry Beeson is awfully tough in the middle. You get the feeling that Oakland is going to try and stuff Seattle defensively in the line, see if they can't control the game at the line of scrimmage with their outstanding offensive line. They're going to have trouble inside because Beeson is so strong. If they do things effectively, I think it'll be Winnington to the outside. Oakland rushed for only 70 yards in that first Seattle game. So the Seattle defense did an excellent job on them. Down right now is Dave Brown, the right cornerback from Michigan. And they're examining his right knee. Keith Simpson will come in. The Jets upset Miami 24-13. Are there any upsets though anymore? I think they're NFL? just going to have to to quit predicting someone to be the favorite because I think we're four for four today, and last week we were nine out of 14. It's about time we filed a favorite. Look at New England now. They, if they win today, they'll be playing. They're just starting now at Baltimore. Uh, if they win today, they'll go two games up on Miami, and they'll be an excellent uh, condition to go on and win their division, qualify automatically for the playoffs. New England just scored. They lead Baltimore early, 7-0. Third down and three for the Raiders with a slot right. Uh-oh, somebody moved. It looked like... It was 56, Steve Sylvester. Well, you get a little nervous. You know he's a little pumped up. And as a matter of fact, the whole Oakland team last night in, in the lobby looked a little more intense than I've seen them in the past. I went up to say hello to Matusak. His only comment start, was... Number 66, offense, third down. His only comment was, all you quarterbacks. He said, there's something about you I just can't stand. I thought, well, you may not like me, but you better get the guy playing. Sandifer goes out. Justin, a fifth secondary backs in. Now Whittington is out. And the three wide receivers are in, Bolitnikoff, Bradshaw, and Branch. Third down and eight for the Raiders from their 41. Stabler for his first pass. And out it goes to Dave Casper for a first down. They're on the Seattle 43-yard line. Casper's dragged down by Cornell Webster. And you can... They are, they are putting a burden on Keith Butler. He's the linebacker. He has to. That was Sammy Green. He has to keep Casper to the outside because the middle linebacker is gone. They're in a man-to-man -man coverage. That simply means Autry Beeman could not cover that much ground to get into the play, and Casper picks up a first. If you give Stabler a chance, he's going to come to Casper. It 
Jack Christensen, the defensive coach for Seattle, mentioned before the game they've got to do something to handle him. Van Egan on first down, short yardage to the 42 of Seattle, stopped by Dennis Boyd, the left tackle. It'll be second down nine. The Raiders in Seattle territory. Now Raymond Chester comes on the field. Morris Bradshaw's in. Litnikoff comes out. Whittington comes out. Double tight end offense. Chester and Casper. Chester does not start here. He could start with most clubs in the NFL. But he gets quite a bit of playing time. And the reverse is off to Bradshaw at the 40-yard line. Bradshaw scoots to the 37, pumped out of bounds between the 37 and 36-yard line by Autry Beeman, the strong safety. Let's see what Sylvester is doing. In his first start, he pulled a little early on one wide sweep, got him a five-yard penalty. This is a perfect job. He might be a little tenuous in that he hasn't picked up his man quick enough, but when he does pick him up, he got Beeman, put him back about four yards past the line of scrimmage. Good job by the offensive guard. The Raiders face a fourth down, a third down and four. Chester's out. Branch is in now. He's to the left. Bradshaw's to the right. Van Egan and Whittington, the running backs. Sideline pattern. There he is at the 25. Branch to the 20 to the 15. First down, Oakland. Job that Stabler put on and put Keith Simpson right up on top of Casper. He just brought the ball back. Morris Bradshaw standing way outside, just lulling down the sideline. Watch, watch Stabler's little, that little pump. Now he looks right at Casper and throws it over the top of his head. If we see in the screen, Casper is down on the ground with Simpson. Bradshaw standing all alone in there in perfect scoring position. First down, Oakland on the Seattle 15. Raiders started this drive under 26. No score, first period. Seattle's not had the ball yet. Van Egan lunging over left guard. Pile up at the 12-yard line by Bill Sandifer and Dennis Boyd, the two interior linemen for Seattle. Kenny Stabler's not thrown an interception in his last two games. Everybody's been wailing about what a bad year he's having. Actually, he's ahead of last year in yardage at the same stage, same number of games, and only 1% completion behind last year. And I think... Uh, interceptions being the criteria by which you judge quarterbacks is the most overrated stat in the world. Usually it's because you're behind, you have to try and catch up, and the good ones all do. Dave Brown's back in the cornerback. Second down eight. Look at that time. The ball got away, but that was a shitter. Let's see if they're calling a fumble. Calling a fumble. Well, he went, he was in the motion to throw. However, he lost the ball while his, while his movement was still backwards. And by the rules, that that goes as a fumble. Boyd gathered it in and just watch it plop out of his hand, John. He's going backwards to throw the ball. He comes forward with the ball already gone. There it's gone. That's a correct call. It'll be Seattle's ball. And we'll look at them on offense right after this message. Yeah, let's have a new Schlitz Light. There's a new taste in Schlitz Light. The taste of natural ingredients brewed into a Pilsner beer. New Schlitz Light. Still less filling with a taste that's bigger than light. Think we won? Well, it's not whether you win or lose. It's it. the beer you choose. Schlitz Light. Natural Pilsner beer. 1934. And Joe Jamar over there, he dreams of farming this desert. But where would he get the money to drill for water over a thousand feet down? Where? From the money folks keep in their full-service bank. You see, America's bankers back Joe and thousands of other farmers, too. So today, food from the San Joaquin Valley reaches every table in America. Your money in the bank made it possible. America's bankers, helping you change things for the better. I don't think I've ever seen this happen uh, in the course of a ball game. Oftentimes, somebody's hit, and the ball will do a thing such as this. However, Stabler's all alone. He's got his man. The ball's a little slick, as it often is early in the game. He knows it's gone backwards. He did. He was not coming forward when it left his hand, and it was a correct call. God, I do remember seeing that once. Gary, you're in the <laughs> Or 
Well, she's not the pastor's favorite. No, no. First down Seattle on their own 20 yard line. Jim Zorn quarterbacking in the I formation. Zorn to the deep man, Sherm Smith. Smith really ganged up. Smith has picked up 559 yards this year, just under five yards to carry. He can catch the ball. He's a big all purpose back. Thank you very much, the Raiders. It was on the 23 yard line of Seattle. Second down and seven. Smith 47. Testerman playing in place of the injured David Sims today. He'll be 42. That's their backfield. Three wide receivers, Rabel, Larger, and McCullough are on the field right now for the Seattle Seahawks. The tight end Sawyer's on the sidelines. Off to Sherman Smith. He's up to the 25-yard line. The tackle. The check down. And Phil Villapiano made the tackle. Third and five. Seahawks. Their own 25. That's the backfield we gave you. And when they line up with a tight end, they have McCullum and Largent. Largent's the leading pass receiver in the NFL. Sawyer is the tight end. There's the offensive line. Tom Lynch and John Yarno, they're the strengths. Nick Bebout's having a good year. Bob Newton coming over from Chicago is just getting into shape to really play. And Steve August is a first draft choice. Third and five. Zorn will throw. A control rush against him. He hits coming out of the backfield. Sherm Smith, first down at the 35-yard line of the Seahawks. You know what? Kurt, I've, I've seen a lot of backs throughout this year, and yet Sherm Smith stands up with all of them. We haven't seen David Sims. This is the third time we've done Seattle. It's the third game Sims has missed. They've called on, on Smith to do a lot more of their offense with Sims out of there. When you lose 11 touchdowns out of your starting backfield, you've lost a lot. This guy's been up to the task on all three occasions. Now McCullum left, large at right. And Howard's in a tight end. First down, Seattle. Zorn faking the handoff to the sideline to Largen. He had a dive back for it. Largen, a brilliant young receiver, has caught 52 balls this year for an average of 17 yards to catch and five touchdowns. And if he caught 52 that were as hard to grab as this one, he is some kind of receiver. He is, has to leave his feet. Zorn throws the ball the only place he can. Largen brings it down, second and three. I think you'll see Seattle go to a lot of quick type patterns against Oakland because their defensive line and linebackers have been playing better every week. Al Hunter's team with Smith as a running back. Testament to the sideline. Second down, six. Hunter tackled at the 43-yard line of Seattle by Willie Hall, the inside linebacker. Al Hunter out of Notre Dame. There's the front three, Matuzak, the left end, McCoy's in the middle. Sis drunk at right end, the rookie starter, Browning has a bad ankle, is not playing today. And four linebackers, Hendricks, Martin is starting in place of Monty Johnson, who's injured, Willie Hall and Villapiano. The secondary, three youngsters in that secondary. Yeah, with Jack Tatum leading the group. Jack Tatum is, a, is an outstanding center fielder back there. They won't come in the middle unless they have to. Third down, two for Seattle. From their 43. Dorn hands off to Smith, and Smith may be there, he may not. He had to get to the 45, that forward He's got it. sticks right on the 45, and it looks like he had it. Sherman Smith again, all individual effort. He was hit very well at the line of scrimmage. They have not been able to penetrate Oakland defensively. Their offensive line, as I mentioned earlier, is a good one, but that time Sherman Smith picked up three on his own. Jack Patera, quiet man on the sidelines, as we told you. All right, they're all set for a first down on their 45-yard line. Zorn looks the field over to the near sideline to McCullum. McCullum is wrestled down in Raider territory at the Raider 47 by Bonnie Jackson, the right cornerback. And Zorn right now hitting left, hitting right, running the ball, passing, a varied attack. You know what I love is just looking at, at both these quarterbacks. Neither one of them do you ever sit and say, well, on first down they do this, on second down they do that. I think they're both so very predictable in that they are unpredictable. Uh, Zorn's going to run his sprint, draws on first down. He's going to throw his play actions on first down. Stabler's going to throw the ball on any down. I think we're just getting in for a good day. They have second down and a yard to go on the Raider 46. There's a deep handoff to Smith. First down and more as he plows to the 39-yard line. 
maybe the 38 of the Raiders, taken there by Bill Villapiano. 7-7, Baltimore tied New England. Lyle Blackwood intercepted a pass of Grogan to ran 21 yards for a score. Miami lost today for late tuners in. New England can open their lead to two games by beating Baltimore today in the AFC Eastern Division. Sherman Smith will elude most of these tackles. His offensive lineman and Don Testament do a pretty good job of blocking. He's putting Charlie Phillips in a bind, one-on-one -on -one out there, nobody else to contain. He was up to it. The Raiders took the opening kickoff, drove to the 12-yard line of Seattle. Stabler fumbled. Now Seattle's come back. They have a nine-play drive going. This will be their 10th play in the current drive. Second down, nine. 38-yard line of the Raiders. Deep drop by Zorn. Shoots it deep, deep. Rabel's there. Rabel has it. Steve Rabel for a touchdown. Rabel scores an 80-yard arch by Seattle. And Rabel out of Georgia Tech in third year. A perfect strike by Jim Zorn. When you say perfect, you couldn't have hit it any more on the head. Rabel does an outstanding job, however, of giving Zorn enough territory toward the sideline to throw to. He's out on the wide side. He cuts way inside. Charlie Phillips comes all the way back to the outside. You can see how much room Zorn has to lead him. He could have let him another yard or two. It would have still been a touchdown. That's good communication between offensive receiver and quarterback. Zorn now is four out of four in the first period. Zorn will hold. Herrera will try the point. The kick is up, and the kick is good. And Seattle went 80 yards for the score. Timeout is Seattle 7, Oakland nothing. Day after day, you seem to get less and less for your money. That's why I like this air filter Fram has brought out, the extra life. Inside, not one filter, but two, which helps it last 50% longer than a regular Fram filter. 50% longer, but it doesn't cost any more money. The Fram extra life air filter. It's like getting something for nothing. Introducing the 1979 Plymouth Fire Arrow. It takes imagination to build a car that offers this much performance, but also gets good economy. Thanks to Fire Arrow's hot new 2.6 liter air injected four cylinder engine, the 1979 Plymouth Fire Arrow looks like a million, saves like a miser, and goes like crazy. That's imagination. That's Plymouth. A Sports World Special Edition brings you live from Sicily, the WBC light heavyweight title fight between champion Matty Parloff and knockout specialist Marvin Johnson, Saturday on NBC. NBC Sports. That's the story of the Seattle Drive. Herrera will be kicking off deep for Oakland, Harold Hart and Arthur Whittington. They've been trying to kick away from Whittington. And they drive this one to Hart. On the six, look out. 15 to the 20, 25. Oh, he fouled out. He had some open ground ahead of him. Might have gone another 10 yards upfield. Harold Hart gets the ball and just barely stays in bounds. The previous kickoff, Cornell Webster got taken out. He did the same thing this time. Kerry Justin was not there to help out. Harold Hart was the only man that helped that player. He'd have been gone to the 50. The Raiders are trailing. 3.31 to play in the first period. And they had the ball on their 33-yard line. Branch spread to the left. Bradshaw right. Van Egan and Whittington, the running back. Staber will go to the air. Shortman over the middle to Van Egan to the 40. Van Egan is tripped up by number 58, Terry Beeson of Kansas. And he's downed on the 41-yard line of the Raiders, an eight-yard gain. He delayed and just slithered over the middle and waited for the short pass. I think that's often the most effective type of throw in the world on first down. Once you fake it to a back, a linebacker has a tendency to leave him alone. He did so. We call it a little check flare. Linebackers are usually back in their drop. 
He handed it off. Now he's got second one. Seattle's gone to a three-man front. Sanderford goes out. Cronin comes in as a fourth linebacker, Peter Cronin. Van Egan hit and dropped at the 40-yard line by 58, Terry Beeson. Again, the middle linebacker. That's going to bring up a third and three, John. And you know they go left when they get in trouble. One yard, they feel they can pick it up any time. However, Beeson slips in behind Upshaw and Dalby, grabs Van Egan before he can get started. Now it's a little more than second one. And the Seahawks back to a four-man front. We've not had an incomplete pass yet in the game. Stabler's three out of three. Zorn is four out of four. Third down and three. Raiders from their 40. Seattle ahead, 7 nothing. Look at that protection. Out it goes. Flag is down. Whittington is dropped behind the line of scrimmage. And right on in there, number 53, Keith Butler, the right linebacker. This is a holding against Oakland. Seattle probably will decline it. There's the final, an interconference game. Cleveland beat the Rams 30 to 19, the third loss this year for the Rams. And a final, another interconference. The AFC goes five games up now. On the NFC, Buffalo beat the Giants 41 17. Looks like Terry Miller had a great day there. He ran. 39 for a touchdown and 13 for a touchdown. And I'm going to bet you Ferguson had something to do with it, too. He did. Jets beat Miami 24-13. Ray Guy, the leading punter in the NFL, just under 44 yards to kick, will be booting to Rufus Crawford, the rookie of Virginia State. The wind is no factor. The flag's hanging limp off the poles. Guy booms. <laughs> towering spiral. Crawford on to 13. Dropped at the 20-yard line, a seven-yard return. Where Seattle will take over a punt of 50 yards by Ray Guy. Time out on the field with a score. Seattle seven, Oakland nothing. I gotta get through. The guys are counting on me. Likely we rented this truck. It's a rider. Rider rent the lease has tough trucks. They keep on going. Judge had never heard the word quit. Hey fellas, he made it! I made it! I drove the truck. I drove you. You're my truck. We're a team. I love you, truck. Announcing the Big Shaver for 19 and three quarter cents with a top quality bonded stainless steel blade that gives you days and days of comfortable shaves. How can Bic sell a shaver like this for so little when nobody else can? Quite frankly, the handle is hollow, practically worthless. What you're really paying for is their quality blade. The Bic Shaver, hollow handle, <laughs> superior blade, incredible price. Super laughs, super fun, super romance, and super surprises in Walt Disney's Super Dad, tonight on NBC. First down, Seattle on their 20 yard line. The Raiders change up. They put in Phil Yacht right in, moves Sistrunk to the middle, and Matuzak is the left in in their three-man front. Seattle on the 20. They haven't had an incomplete pass yet in the game. Eight for eight by both quarterbacks. Largent coming back in motion. Zorn chased around. This is what he likes to do. Roll left and he goes out of bounds. Now that's something that the Raiders did not do in Seattle against Zorn. And if you'll notice, Oakland played for a very rare it's a four-man rush. They have had trouble with a three-man rush. Take a look. Here's Sistrunk and Filia, both of them coming in. Villapiano gets a little hooked in. However, when you're playing a four-man rush, you know Sistrunk standing around looking for draws and screens. Any sort of movement by Zorn, he's after. Secondary handled the, the, the receiver. Zorn had nobody to throw to. That's the first time I've seen him contain him. Second and 17. You're looking at Otis Sistrunk, the middle guard now. He started the game at right in. Second down, 17. Sherman Smith's gone out. He's playing with a tender knee today, and he may have re-injured it. And David Sims is out. Falling down on the 11-yard line is Al Hunter. Another two-yard loss, and now it is third and 19. Phil Yaw was on top of him. Sims, one of the top scoring backs, the leading rusher, 
for Seattle. Sitting out with a bum knee. Smith has just gone to the sideline. But when those two are healthy, the Seahawks have them a fine pair of running backs. That's right. I think you can look forward to, for, to Al Hunter running the ball an awful lot today because if Smith's knee is a little bit tender, they're not going to run him a lot anyway. The Raiders have five defensive linemen on the field. Third down, Pat's in there now. Pat Toomey. The rush the passer, but they go with a draw. And drop is Testament, and he's hit by 83. Ken Henry, who's having one of his greatest years, and he's had some good ones. Now the Raider defense gets a hand as they come to the sideline. And Seattle will be punting with fourth down and 17. Neil Colsey, who's averaged seven and a half yards of punt return, is standing on his own 42-yard line. This is Herman Weaver. There are his punting statistics. The kick from about his one. Lowen. Bouncing. Gets a Seattle bounce to the 50. Phillips going to the... The 44 and dropped to the 43 yard line of Seattle. And the Raiders have great field position now. Ray Guy helps set it up with his 50 yard kick. Timeout again. Our score late in the first period 7 0 Seattle. <laughs> What a gift that stops action indoors and at night? Extra can do. To all the beautiful lights of Christmas, add Extra Light. The new Kodak Extra Light 10 camera. It's got a built-in flash. A built-in action catching flash that stops whatever you're doing. For more pictures, more places, more often, give a can-do camera. The new Kodak Extra Light 10. Another open me first gift to save Christmas in pictures. My wife got the house. But I got the Sony. Darn. I thought they were going to give me a Sony. Most people feel very special about Sony Trinitron color TVs, probably because Sony Trinitron color TVs are very special. You see, it's not just a TV. It's a Sony. I hope he's not disappointed. I think he was expecting a Sony. ball on the Seattle 43. New England leading Baltimore 14 to 7. Grogan to Jackson 23 for a touchdown. 321 to play in the first period. Baltimore you remember upset New England earlier in the season. All right Stabler looks them over and he gives it off to Van Egan running left to the 40. Van Egan powers his way inside the 35. And they'll spot it on the 34 of Seattle where John Harris had to make free safety. All right, you're talking, you're playing a team in Oakland that is pumped up. These guys, look at that offensive line surge. Shell, Upshaw. These guys are doing a job. Dolby handles his man from the right tackle position. That's a nice little nine yard pickup. And they're not bringing it back. That's the end of the first period. We'll be back with the second quarter of today's game right after these messages from your... One of the greatest movies of all time, George C. Scott as Patton. Commence firing. George C. Scott in his Oscar-winning role and Carl Malden head a magnificent cast in Patton, winner of seven Academy Awards, a special single-night presentation, Tuesday on NBC. In my day, you had different records for different bank services, and things could get confusing. But Seattle First was the first bank in the state to change all that. Their first line account gives you checking and savings on one statement, along with loans and bonds, telephone transfers, even 24-hour banking. Guess you could say one statement sums up just about every banking service you could want. First line. <laughs> for something new in banking, look for it first at Seattle First. We started farming in 1942 with one son and one Ford. Our family grew, and so did our faith in Ford trucks. Our boys have that faith, too, right, boys? Right, Dad. 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 You said it, Pops. That makes 11 boys and 25 Ford trucks. <laughs> Smart boys, just like their daddy. Take the 15-minute test drive at your Northwest Ford dealer. The idea, guys. You're watching KING TV Seattle. 
Kurt Gowdy, John Brody into the second period. Seattle leading 7 0. John Madden, 102 victories now in just 10 years. Trying to drive for the first down is Mark Van Egan. I think John got to those first 100 wins just a little bit quicker than Don Shula. But uh, both got there, and that's the point. Getting there is the accomplishment. That's, that's averaging 10 years of win. That's a lot of wins. Now look at Madden. He's fuming. As fast as the turnover is on coaches in this game, for a coach to get 100 wins, that's they've made it. We're going to have the measurement. Time of possession in the first period. Each team had the ball seven and a half minutes. For late tuners in, the Raiders took the opening kickoff, drove to the Seattle. 12 yard line Staber back to pass the ball plopped out of his hand he fumbled Seattle recovered and then Seattle went 80 yards for a score with Zorn hitting wide receiver Steve Rabel their inch is short on the 33 yard line of the Seahawks the Raiders have a third down and inches Van Egan and Whittington with three tight ends on the field. Whittington. Whittington has the first down to the 32-yard line of Seattle. They try to pile him up. Beeson was submarining the play. The middle linebacker, Boyd and Price were angling in. I'll tell you, Henry Lawrence did a good job. You can see Upshaw in the hole leading Whittington. However, the space was made available by Lawrence's block. Cincinnati over Houston in the first period, 7 0. Anderson to tight end, Don Bass. Here we go again. The Bengals have won only one game this year. They and the 49ers have the worst records. Roll out by Stabler. Flag is down. The pass is complete to Branch at the 20, but we had a flag down. As Stabler was rolling out. We have not seen him roll out much this year, very seldom. He used to roll out and run the ball a lot. He had very. Uh, mobile ability and running, but then he came up with a bad knee. Here's a holding call against the Seattle Seahawks. It looked like uh, Peter Cronin was all over the top of Winnington. Or Sammy Green. Holding, number 53, defense declined, first down. Butler, they call it on, Keith Butler. See if we can spot it, John. If we can, we've got some kind of cameraman. Harry Coyle, if you can pick this up while Stabler's got the ball in his hand, you're Houdini. Well, it happened back there at the line of scrimmage. Stabler now lines him up first down to decline the penalty. Whittington to the 20, cuts back, drives inside the 15 and goes to the 12 or 13 yard line where he was spilled by Sammy Green Beeson. Sylvester leading the way, the right guard. Not only did he lead the way, he got out there in plenty of time for Whittington to make, make his choice as to whether he wanted to go inside or outside. Steve Sylvester has good speed, got off on the ball very well, and also got help from Van Egan. They're moving the ball at will right now. They take Whittington out and put Harold Hart, number 23, in his running back. Four linebackers on the field for Seattle. Santa for the tackle goes out. Three down linemen. Second down and two for the Raiders. They're trailing 7-0. Van Egan to the 10. Fumble! And I believe he recovered his own fumble. If he did, he was lucky. The ball dropped in back of him. Van Egan recovered his own fumble. Okay, now they run to the left side. They've run to the right effectively. You'll notice they're going wide most of the time, trying to cut off the middle linebacker, Beeson. Created a big hole. Harold Hart got a good block on Beeman, the, the strong safety. Now, if there was an element of luck. However, keeping your attention on the ball when it does leave your control is a very fine quality, and Van Egan found it real quick. That's 21 fumbles this season, 11 of their own. First and goal to go. For the Raiders on the four-yard line. Flag is down. Van Egan for a touchdown, but they dropped the flag. Well, we'll have to wait. Offside. Number 20. Seattle. It'll be declined. And the Raiders have scored. Van Egan going over for his eighth touchdown. Sean 
shell again. This time, look at these are big holes when you're dealing inside tackle to tackle with down inside the five yard line. He found enough to get his whole body through, get the ball over the over the end line, seven to six, going for seven to seven. Errol Mann for the point. It's up, and the game is tied. And the Raiders tie it with 12.29 to play in the first half. We'll return to the Oakland Coliseum right after this word. Connecticut General spends more than the cost of a college education training us representatives. So when clients have complex financial problems, we come through. Come in through for you. That's what CG people do. Connecticut General is looking for bright, energetic people to help others in financial planning. Contact CG, and if you're qualified, we'll come through for you. Come in through for you. That's what CG people do. Call us. We'll come through for you, too. Cast iron where you need it for strength and accuracy. Hardened gears and ball bearing construction for long life and dependability. Heavy duty motors with power to spare. Rockwell builds tools that way for a reason. Because a power tool is only as good as the job it can do and just how long it can do it. Rockwell, your work can't afford anything less. The game-breaking plays, the hottest new craze, all pros in action, the latest in fashion, straight-talking views and late-breaking news, the pregame show that has it all, NFL 78. That's the story of the 43-yard drive by the Raiders. They gained a lot of yards in the exchange of punts and then took it in. Here's Ray Guy's kickoff. He booms it deep. Will down a touchback. Seahawks ball, first down on the 20. NFL 78. Next Sunday, we'll have a feature Fairbanks versus Landry. They'll be, me uh, be meeting their games. There are the games. After NFL 78 at 12.30, the early games are Baltimore at New York, Miami at Washington. Starting at 3.30, we'll have Pittsburgh at Houston, Cleveland at Seattle, New England at Dallas. Landry and Fairbanks will be meeting in Dallas. Zorn Fates throws it down the middle, off the fingertips of the tight end, who is wide open, John Sawyer. Very well run pattern. He got behind Hendricks on a little play action fake. The ball was right where it had to be thrown. Sawyer had only he and Tatum to contend with if he caught the ball. Forgot to carry it. Zorn is thrown for more yards than any quarterback this year. That's the first incomplete pass of this game. Second down, 10 for the Seahawks from their 20. Here's a rollout right. Out of bounds is Testament, bumped out on his 28. Zorn likes to roll left, naturally, being a left-hander. This time he took off the other way. He seems to do it going the, the opposite way of um, that which he throws, as well as any quarterback. Bradshaw does it very well. Only those with strong arms can do that. He's got a strong arm. In fact, he's got a lot of ability. And we told you Zorn led the league in yards past. I think the only player to throw more passes is Tarkington this year than Jim Zorn. Third down and two for the Seahawks. Well, Hunter, the lone setback. Hunter has the ball. Hunter is stopped. Maybe just short of that 30 where he had to go for a first down by Rod Martin, the young linebacker, filling in for Monty Johnson today. Right up against the 30-yard line. And bring it on. Timeout. Let's take a look at it. It's an inch one way or another, Kurt. And I don't believe that Hunter gained one inch after contact was made by Martin. Raiders have two excellent young linebackers for the future, Rod Martin and Jeff Barnes, that they're high on. Short by an inch, Kurt, and that just means the yard, <laughs> the, the chains are correct. Here comes Hunter. Pretty good block at the point of attack. However, 
However, Mike McCoy was the man that got the good lick, allowed Martin to stand him up and hold him an inch short of a first down. The Raiders are going, or the Seahawks are going for it. Patera has sent Bullard in a left tackle offensively. This is fourth down and an inch to go. I like it. On the Seahawk 30 yard line. Testerman, first down. Testerman wriggles out to the 34 yard line. They gamble in their own territory. I think, you know, it isn't a gamble. It's the same as a turnover. They think their chances are about 80 20 to make it, maybe a little higher doing it from inside your own 30 yard line. But they move people out on the right side. When you do that, anybody can run for yardage. Both Bob Newton and Steve August did their job. And so did John Sawyer. John, all those three were wedging ahead of him. Seattle under 34, first down. Game tied, seven all, second period. Smith's back in. He is banged hard at the 35 of Seattle. And he's hit there by number 53, Rod Martin, the inside linebacker. And John Matuzak, the left in, number 72. Second down, nine. Time remaining, 10.57 in the first half. Seattle scored first. 80-yard drive. The Raiders came back on a 43-yard drive. Rabel scored the touchdown. A pass reception, 38 yards for Seattle. Van Egan bucked over four yards for the Raiders. That's been the scoring. Rabel's on the field right now. Three wide receivers. In motion goes Testerman. Zorn dropping deep. Throws to Testament, and he's bumped out on the 41-yard line of the Seahawks. Driven out by Monty Jackson, the right cornerback, 42. Zorn would have thrown the ball a little bit earlier, but just as he went to unload it the first time, he tripped, and there was nobody back there. He was, he's got awfully good balance to come back and hit Testament again and still have him open. As he rolls out, you'll see he's ready to go right about now. Whoops. And he knew he had to catch his balance, came back and hit him just on the run. That gives the Seahawks a third and three. Line of scrimmage, their own 41. Out they go. They're chasing Zorn around. He's going to run for it, and he's out of bounds. He may have gone out before the yardstick. He did. Mike McCoy forced him out of bounds. Mike McCoy has a big job to do. When they play a three-man line, McCoy has to watch for that sprint draw. So right now, you see, he's making a surge. However, he's standing around waiting for one of those backs. When they clear, he's standing around like Sistrunk was, trying to force Soren out to the sideline. He does so short of the first down. Neil Colsey goes back as the safety man for the Raiders. Herman Weaver in punt formation on fourth and two. Raiders have ten men up there at the line of scrimmage. But they're peeling back the block. A low spiral to Colsey on the 25 to the 30. He's up to the 34 and then drops forward to his 35-yard line. So now we'll watch Oakland back with their offense after that punt of 29 yards with a score tied 7-all. This computer is the brain behind an extraordinary game from Parker Brothers. Code name, Sector. You use the computer to track down an unseen sub. The sub uses the computer to escape and counterattack. Your mission, be the first ship to sink the enemy sub. Range, 10, speed 9. Firing range, depth 3, fire. All right. Code name, Sector. The board game where you match wits with a computer. There's a new taste in Schlitz Light. The taste of natural ingredients brewed into a Pilsner beer. New Schlitz Light. Still less filling with a taste that's bigger than light. Gentlemen, here's the fast horses. Schlitz Light and those who love them. Schlitz Light. <laughs> natural Pilsner beer. The true and terrifying story of Lauren Elder. Alone. Trapped on a mountain. And I alone survived. Monday. Ten minutes, 15 seconds left to play in the first half. Raiders ball, their own 35-yard line. The game tied at 7-all. Cincinnati now up on Houston, 10-0. A Chris Barr field goal of 34 yards. Staber will throw on first down. 
And he's going deep to branch. He's out there. Intercepted and dropped. Dave Brown had it in his hands and then dropped it. And he is disgusted with himself. And Dave Brown is one of the few people that can keep up with Cliff Branch. Staber threw this ball just a little bit late. Had he thrown it early enough, Branch had a little bit of a lead. Brown will depend on his speed to catch up. You can see he's cutting underneath. The ball been thrown a little farther, might have been six. However, Brown is awfully tough to beat. Five out of six for Ken Stabler in this game. He sends Bradshaw right, Branch left again. Second down, 10 for the Raiders. They're on 35. Here's a draw play. Whittington spinning away, 35. Whittington hit hard at the 40-yard line by Keith Butler and Dave Brown. It's a tough kid, this Whittington, at 180. He's a good lead blocker, too. Well, they, they put in a defense called a nickelback defense. Keith Simpson, with their first draft choice out of Memphis State, was very fast to come up and make the play. Sometimes those halfbacks that'll hit can really help your defense. Three wide receivers. Belitnikoff joins Branch and Bradshaw. Third and five. Raiders on their 40. Raiders on their 40. Three-man rush. Look at this time. Pass good to Casper for a first down at the Raider 48-yard line. Dave Casper has his second catch of the game. He was wrapped up by Peter Cronin and Keith Simpson. There is no pass defense that can handle that much time for a quarterback to throw. Stabler in the pass has been given four and five. They depend on it. However, watch what the linebackers have to do. They've got Casper handled here. They've got him handled here, but they don't have him handled here. As soon as he makes his move forward, he's dead. They've got a first down. He came back to the ball. A smart move by Dave Casper. To let the cough and Branch stay in his wide receiver. Here's Whittington trying to run a sweep. And he picks up five to the 47 of the Seahawks, where Bill Gregory brought him down, aided by Terry Beeson, the middle linebacker. Oakland's in Seattle territory in the Seattle 47, a second and five. Time in the first half, eight and a half minutes. The score tied seven all. The Raiders, by winning, can go a full game ahead of Denver. They meet Denver here next Sunday evening. Seattle, by winning, and be right in the thick of it. They could drop the Raiders to five losses. It'd be only one game behind them then. And Denver's lost five. Out it goes to Whittington. There's a flag down. He may have holding in that backfield of the Oakland Raiders. And if it is holding, it very easily could be on Gene Upshaw because the official threw the flag, hit, hit Gene in the head, as a matter of fact. Well, this will move him back. Instead of a second and two or five, they're going to have a second and 15 if they accept the penalty, and they are. This puts the ball, let's listen to this. Holding, number 63, offense, <laughs> second down. It was on Upshaw, as John Brody called it. So on the 43-yard line of the Raiders, they have a second down and 15 to go. You have to be a pretty good official to catch him. He's had experience. The Raiders now will attack with three wide receivers again. Second down and 15. Pass deflected away. Gowdy and John Brody in the Oakland Coliseum. The Oakland Raiders and the Seattle Seahawks are tied 7-all. Just under eight minutes to play in the first half. The ball's on the 43-yard line of the Oakland Raiders, and they have a third down and 15. Seattle scored first on an 80-yard drive, capped off by a 38-yard pass from quarterback Zorn, a wide receiver Steve Rabel. In the second period, the Raiders march 43 yards. Van Egan going over four yards for the touchdown, and that's been it. Third and 15. Out they go deep. Casper has it. Casper wrestled down on the 42. He's 
close to a first down. I think John Madden is down there with the official trying to help him out a bit because the official ruled he did not make it by my, by what I was looking at. It's it's within a foot either way. We can see John. <laughs> Are we going to go to eight officials? He's the eighth one. Help John and the ninth also. He picks up for two of them. He is on top and he doesn't miss much. You think those tight ends don't know where those first down markers are? I think every year he's becoming more and more the John Barrymore of the sidelines. You can watch him. The first down, watch him now. Yeah. He's, he's going to let that judgment slip. Okay, Stabler's got plenty of time to throw. His man in the clutch is Casper when he can get to them. They're in a five defensive back situation. Linebacker and Autry Beeman both trying to handle Casper. Makes a perfect cut at the right time, and Stabler puts it where he needs, and they've got a first. Raiders on the Seattle 42, first down. Game tied, 7 all. Branch, Bradshaw, the wide men. Again, that's deflected at the line of scrimmage by Ernie Price, the left end, number 62. It'll be second down 10 for the Raiders. Stabler, Price from Texas A&I in his sixth year. Stabler has thrown 10 times, completed seven for 79 yards. Casper's caught three of them for nearly 40 yards. And Kurt, you know, that was, a, that was an instance where your defensive line really helped your linebackers out. And I think the stop Stabler from being able to throw the ball to Van Egan and Whittington over the middle on little check flares. They've got to get help from their defensive lineman. Raymond Chester has replaced Dave Casper at tight end. Second down 10. Draw play to Whittington. They're waiting for him and he's hit by Keith Butler. Butler came across, waited for him, and with a perfect one-on-one -on -one tackle in the open field, dumped him. And Bill Gregory forced Whittington right into Butler. That's what you call good coordination between outside linebacker and defensive end. All right, Bolitnikov back in to make it three wide receivers for the Raiders. Five backs are coming on. Simpson joins Webster, Beeman, Harrison, Brown. Nihas comes on, or goes out. And here we go again, Stabler third and 13. He's going to say, boys, you got to get beyond the 32 of Seattle for that first down. He's hit, and he throws it away, and he was throwing it to a lineman, number 78, Art Shell. Good movement by Shell. In order to avoid getting a 15-yard penalty, he did duck the ball rather than catch it. It's a natural reaction to catch that thing if you're, whether you're a lineman or not. <laughs> Stabler could not tell. He was under real duress here. Good pass rush. They're playing a little game. They're also sending a linebacker in on the play. They slipped the block. As they did so, pressure up the middle hurts any quarterback. Keith Butler on a blitz. Stabler can't differentiate between Shell or Van Egan. That's okay. <laughs> that Lawrence hit the ground, didn't he? I don't, I don't want any part of that ball. <laughs> Punt formation with Ray Guy. Rufus Crawford is the safety man. Daly to try and hang it up. Low snap. He gets away. Well, it's blocked. They blocked it after the no snap. And it's out of bounds. In there was Cornell Webster to get a piece of it. Cornell Webster, number 38. Guy fielded the low snap. And he, Cornell Webster, is one of their outstanding special team men, as well as one of their fine cornerbacks. The ball hit the ground, made the great guy delay just a little bit, but Webster is off right on the snap of the ball, takes a perfect an angle toward it. A perfect angle is where if you miss it, you still don't interfere with the kicker, and they've got a big break. Well, they're all talking it over. While they do, we'll take time out. It's a tie game, 7-7. car Chrysler LeBaron for 1979 it's got a look it's got life a certain style that very fashionably avoids looking like all the others which maybe says something about you Chrysler 
Casa LeBaron. Two doors, four doors, and wagons in styles that fit your life. Yet this two-door LeBaron medallion is priced and sized with cars like Cutlass Supreme comparably equipped. Come on, live a little. Put a new Chrysler LeBaron in your life and add a little life to your style. The Steelers go at it with the Oilers. The Patriots take on the Cowboys. Part of exciting NFL doubleheader action next Sunday on NBC. Check local listings for the games in your area. Forty-four yard line of Seattle. There'll be some interesting games next week on NBC. Miami and Washington early game starting at 12:30 with NFL 78. Two excellent late games. Pittsburgh at Houston. And New England at Dallas. They'll start at 3:30 with NFL 78. A word from uh, the Cincinnati-Houston game. Earl Campbell will tell you about this after this play. First down on the Seattle 44-yard line. The lone setback is Don Testerman. He has the ball, and he goes down with a flag drop. We may have a holding here. Earl Campbell has just broken Don Wood's record of 1,163 yards rushing by a rookie running back. Campbell, so far, early in that game in the first half between Houston and Cincinnati, now has 1,176 yards for the season, an all-time record for a rookie running back. And more to go. Yes, I think, Kurt. However, he'd give up about... Number 51, offense... First down. I think he'd give up all of them if they could get a few points on the board right now because this is a must game for them against Cincinnati. And if, if they've still got the donut, that's not good. They were trailing 10 nothing. Surprises already today. Miami was upset by the Jets, although, as John said, there are no more upsets. San Diego is way behind Kansas City. Going down the sideline. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And that was Steve Largent, the leading pass. American Conference, who broke down that sideline. He was covered by Phillips, who was trying to dive for an interception. And it's only the outstanding quarterbacks that can hit that seam. You have to throw it as soon as they get past the cornerback in a double zone. Charlie Phillips was coming over, but there is a little dead spot in there. Zorn zipped the ball, zipped it just a little bit lower. It would have been a big gainer. With 10 seconds to go, Tarkington to Rashad, and they tied Green Bay 10-all. They're in overtime. They're now in overtime. There's a final. Kansas City shut out San Diego to snap a four-game winning streak to the Chargers. Second down and 20. Going rolling. Willie Hall hits him, and the ball squirted away. Willie Hall Zorn as he threw the ball. An excellent pass rush by Willie Hall. Let me say something. Let's, uh, John will take this replay, then we'll talk. Well, we talked about contain. They're playing a three-man line with a five-back defense. Hendricks gets pushed in, allows Zorn to contain. However, they knocked down his back trying to get into the flat area. Willie Hall saw nobody out there to cover, made a, made a good adjustment, forced Zorn to throw the ball to nobody. They've got a third down and 20. I think what they're doing is what Denver did, John, when we saw him up there. They're putting a spy on Zorn. Uh, one of the linebackers doing nothing but trailing Zorn wherever he goes. And, uh, the last couple of plays have been Willie Hall. That doesn't guarantee you handling, though. No. Third down and 20 for the Seahawks. From their 34, they run it to Testerman. Testerman is hit by two Raiders at the 40 and hit hard. 47 is Charlie Phillips, and 41 is Phil Villapiano, and Seattle will have to punt. And those two do hit some. Howard Mudd, the Seattle's offensive line coach, has taught these guys excellent technique. You see both the middlemen moving the center man out. However, it's a long yarded situation. Sistrunk loses nothing. One thing, it's one thing to want to, it's another thing to have the technique to do it, and Seattle does. Weaver punting on fourth down. Neil Colsey at the 20-yard line of the Raiders waiting for the punt. He just got that one away. Colsey fields it on his 25. Skips around and goes down on his 31-yard line. Hit there by Dennis Boyd, the left tackle. Timeout in the Oakland Coliseum. Just under six minutes to play in the first half, and it's still a tie, 7-all. It's drag racing champion, 240-mile-an-hour Tom McEwen. 
And 40 mile an hour, Fred Dreyer, dune buggy champ of the L.A. Rams. Hey, Fred, you better watch the speed limit. Look, Tom, they don't call me the Sandman for nothing, you know. Yeah, but first of all, you're a Pennzoil man, right? I put Pennzoil quality in all my buggies. Pennzoil quality. Ask for it. Yeah. Introducing Hertz Takeoff Rates. Save up to 35% on the average weekday rental when you take off Thursday through Sunday for a minimum of two to three days. Take off in a subcompact for only $13.95 a day. Fairmont's $15.95. Granada's $17.95. Thunderbird's $21.95 a day. All with no charge for mileage. There are some restrictions, so check with Hertz. Take off next weekend with Hertz Low Takeoff Rates. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. You're watching KING-TV, Seattle. This is Kurt Gowdy and John Brody with 5.50 to go in the half. There's your score, a tie, 7-all. Seattle scored in the first period, a 38-yard pass. Zorn to Rabel. Van Egan went over in the second period for four yards, and that has been the scoring on first down. Slicing over his left tackle coming out to the 35 is Arthur Whittington brought down by Terry Beeson and Keith Butler. Kurt, you know what I've noticed more than, than any other ball game I've seen all year today is that they're moving different defenses in and out. In other words, they respect each other's offense so well that if you play a certain little defense, they're going to beat you with it. Both teams are going to do so. Terry Beeson making another fine tackle inside. Whittington has got to get outside to get away from Beeson to pick up yards. But you just, you just notice the respect both teams have for each other's offense. Second and five. Flag is down. It's to Casper. But they dropped the flag. They may have another holding call. Regardless of whether they dropped the flag, that move I haven't seen. Just as he was about to throw it, he made a, made a move, got underneath him, and got it to Casper. It doesn't look like it's going to count, but it sure was a nice move. We were... Holding, number 66, offense, second down. That's on Steve Sylvester, the third holding call on the Raiders. There's the overtime. Five seconds to go when they tied it. <clears throat> we were talking about Kansas City. They have lost some of the most heartbreaking games this year, yet they've hung in there, and today they shut out San Diego. The Bears win their second in a row, beat Tampa Bay 14-3. Arthur Whittington. Whittington out to the 32-yard line. Brought down by Webster and Ernie Price. Arthur Whittington, the ball carrier. The Cardinal four-game streak stopped today. The Eagles beat them 14 to 10. The Eagles are working their way toward a playoff spot. New England leading Baltimore 14 to 7 in the second period. Cincinnati leading Houston 10 nothing second quarter. And back here in Oakland, we got a little third and nine, Kurt. Third and nine with three wide receivers for the Raiders. Sideline. Branch out of bounds. He's out of bounds on the 45. And that should be good for a first down. I tell you, Oakland's the only team in the league that runs patterns like that. Cliff Branch went 25 yards downfield, came back seven. Staber had enough time to hang in there and throw him the ball. No defensive back can handle that situation. John and I were talking to Jim Plunkett last night. And John asked him how do you like the Raiders' uh, <laughs> policies. He said, I'll tell you one thing, their passing game is different than anyone. They run the deepest roots patterns in the league. Raymond Chester playing in place of Dave Casper caught it on the 49 of Seattle. And then Jen said to John, of course, you got to have protection to do that. And he says they get it. Takes time to get downfield. And it really puts a burden on your defensive backs. Both offenses have moved the ball pretty well when they were able to predict what defense the other team was in. And I, can, I get the feeling that Seattle is trying to confuse Stabler. When they do, they hold him for naught. When they don't, he just rips him apart. 
It is second down and four for the Raiders. Here's Van Egan. Van Egan is stopped at the 47 yard line of Seattle by Bill Gregory. They're right in. And they're down now to a third and a yard. Third and a yard to go. Time remaining. 320 in the first half. The game tied. Houston has come back to make it a 10 7 game. Cincinnati ahead. Steve Niehaus is in a tackle. Cronin goes out as a linebacker. Four man front. Three tight ends. Bankston, Chester, and Casper for the Raiders. So they go to Whittington. Or Hart. Hart. Down that sideline. Skips out of bounds. They've all bunched up inside and then sent Harold Hart wide. Well, that's true. They were all bunched up. Cornell Webster tried to make a great play, and in so doing, he lost containment. However, it's worth the try. He's got pretty good pursuit coming from him. You can see Hart wants to go inside. Harris fills that hole. Cornell Webster got, whoops, he also got hooked a little by Steve Sylvester. But that slipped the attention of the officials in his first down for Oakland. Almost a nice tackle by Sylvester. <laughs> first down, Raiders on the Seattle 33. Errol Mann, the field goal kicker. 2.55 to go in the first half. The game is tied, 7-all. They have the blitz on. He fires. There's Branch. He goes down in the 21. A first down open. What Branch? You can tell Stapler as well, Kurt. He's moving around in the pocket. He's never really run the ball that effectively as a professional quarterback in college. He was something else running the ball as well as throwing it. However, you can see he's got real quick little movements, nifty feet. Puts the ball right where it has to be thrown to Branch. No defensive back has a chance under those conditions. Kenny Stabler is 10 out of 14, 110 yards. First down, the Raiders threatening here at the end of the first half. The first man through, Van Egan, plows to the 17-yard line. And he was smacked by Bill Gregory and Keith Butler coming up at halftime, NFL 78. Don't forget on January 1st, the two big bowl games on NBC, the Rose Bowl, Michigan, USC, followed by the Orange Bowl, Oklahoma, and Nebraska. We'll tell you more about those games. Right now, there's a two-minute warning timeout, and the score is all tied 7-up. At Pioneer, we don't build a high-fidelity receiver the way some of our competitors do. Instead of a press board bottom, our SX-780 has a metal one that limits interference. It has power meters and a DC power supply for richer bass. It's things like this that have made Pioneer number one among people who care about music. And isn't that why you buy high-fidelity components? Because you care about music? Pioneer's SX-780. Who's America's greatest band leader? America's greatest band leader is Spidell. Spidell. America's greatest band leader is Spidell. Spidell. Spidell's elegant new band leader is Thin Line 2, the thinnest twist of flex ever. It'll make your old watch look new or your new watch look better. America's greatest Well, New England's on their game again, 21 to 7 over Baltimore, and it looks like Pittsburgh and New England are going to get two spots, and the other two are going to be divided and fought for by about six different teams. The wild card is going to be wild. It's a wild one. Two minutes to go in the first half. Second and seven, Oakland on the Seattle 18 yard line. The pass, flag is dropped on. Casper trying to catch the ball over Autry Beeman. Flag was dropped at the 10. Kurt, that looked like one of those throws you just try to lead a man under the basket. And that one is called against Seattle's Beeman. I do not know if that, if this penalty is against Autry Beeman on Casper. It was thrown awfully early, but you can see Stabler sees that Casper has a pretty good position. Number 53, defense. That's right. It First didn't look foul. like it was Beeman. It was Keith Butler. It's an illegal chuck is what it is, not interference. Somebody got by the line of scrimmage for five yards, was hit once, and was hit again illegally. 
13 yard line. First down, Whittington on the sweep, scoops to the 10. Just over the 10, Ernie Price ran across with him and brought him down. Second seven. Earl Campbell has just broken the all-time Houston rushing record for a season. 1,198 yards. This is his 13th game. The old record was set in 14 games. Second down, seven. The 16-game schedule will change without a record. Brad, oh, saved there by Johnny Harris. Harris high in the air to tip it away. And the impressive. It was a blitz. All the backs were trying to get on the receivers as fast as they could. Stabler had plenty of time to throw it. He saw Harris cutting underneath, but as Harris tried to intercept the ball, if we can see it in the screen, which I think we can, he hooked Cliff Branch's feet, uh, foot. Well, he didn't hook it at that point, but he did get up and hook the ball. I must be seeing things out there, pal. <laughs> Sometimes it helps. Third down and seven from the 10 yard line of Seattle. It is no good. The Morris Bradshaw struck the turf in front of him. And now the Raiders will be coming out with Arrow Man to try a field goal as their attack stalls at the Seattle 10. Crossing patterns are the, are the hardest things for defensive backs to defend against. And when you give your quarterback time, it's almost certain death. That was the second crossing pattern in a row. And the defense was up to the task for both of them. This will be a 20, oh, 26 and a half. Make it a 26 yard field goal attempt by Earl Mann. David Humble hold it. It is down, it is up, and the kick is good. And the Raiders have the lead. year coming up on NBC for the rest of the season all the playoff games AFC bowl games loaded for you for sports excitement here's the kickoff guys boot wobbles down to the 10 picked up by Crawford at the five he's buried and he's down to the five yard line but they may spot him on the seven yard line Seven-yard line of Seattle, first down. Here it is, John. This is a very dangerous time for Seattle. They're, they're very much in the ball game. Ten to seven, both offenses have moved the ball. Oakland's got a little of the best of it. However, a mix-up on a kickoff. Harold Hart down there to cover. They've got the ball on their own six-yard line. There's a minute to play. You can bet Oakland will take time out if they don't get out of this hole. Largent, McCullough with the wide receivers. One minute to go in the half. rid of that ball. There's a flag dropped in the end zone. Matuzak was really in on him with Willie Hall, who was blitzing. This may be a two-point penalty, be. too, because if that's holding in the end zone, that's what it is. Zorn used his head very well. The He's trying. was thrown in air. There's no foul on that play. The flag was thrown in air, so let's just give credit to Zorn for making a real heads-up play. He knows where he's standing. He's trying to follow Rabel all the way. He knows he can't hit him, but he can get it close enough to not get called for a penalty, and they come back second and 10. The official was honest. He came right out and said, hey, we blew it. We threw a flag when we shouldn't have. No penalty on the play. I've always wondered why you weren't supposed to do that. We've seen that several times this year. 
Second down, 10. The Seahawks from their seven. Duke Ferguson in there now, replacing McCullum at wide receiver. Lauren again will throw. This one is out, and he hits Testerman, who's up to the 16-yard line of the Seahawks, where he's stopped by Ted Hendricks. And the Seahawks call time. They have two left. Oakland has three. <laughs> I can, I'll tell you, that's the, the Seattle group is with it. They're on their own 16-yard line with 47 seconds left, and they're calling timeout. Now, uh, Jerry Rome, who I think is about as imaginative as a, a play caller as anyone, who is their coordinator, is upstairs calling plays. He must think they have something down here, or maybe he's confused as to which way they're going. However, they've been doing this all year. They've been getting out of holes all year. Here you can see him conversing with Howard Mudd and Jack Patera. There may be a play that can go 83 yards. However, I think I'd just slip it on into the locker room, come out and try to play him again in the second half. A Sports World Special Edition, 4 to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Matty Porloff against Marvin Johnson, a 15-round WBC light heavyweight championship fight from Italy. Porloff, the 30-year-old WBC light heavyweight champ from Yugoslavia, 122 lost one fight and had a draw he's had 11 KOs since he turned pro three and a half years ago marvin johnson is a 24 year old powerful puncher strong attack especially in the early rounds and that will be on nbc saturday december 2nd third down a yard to go for the seahawks 47 seconds remaining in the half testament to stop short of a first down now the Raiders may come in and call time and stop the clock. I think there is no doubt. Okay, they're calling on their offensive line to move somebody out on the left side. Testament sees no hole to the left outside, has to cut it back to the inside, and when you stop, your momentum go has nothing going for you at the line of scrimmage. You're not going to make many yards. And it's all confusion. They were on fourth down. That's just, yeah, but that's just heads up football. They feel they caught the Raiders with more than 10 men on, with more than 11 men on the field. They were going to get a penalty and, and cold control of the ball. Zorn used his head. However, Oakland was smart enough to call another timeout. And now they'll punt. That was all confusion. The uh, Seahawks had men pouring on the field trying to scramble off. So now each team has two timeouts left in the first half. The last game, Seattle rushed for 204 yards. Today, they've been held to 31 yards rushing in the first half. It's been a different Oakland defense. Coming up at halftime, NFL 78, with all the highlights and scores of what's happened today. And a lot's happened, as usual, in the NFL. That's <laughs> Testament talking to the Seattle head coach, Jack Patera. 10 to 7, Oakland leading. Madden wants to talk to somebody. Now he calls the official over. And Patera was just talking to Zorn, and it didn't look to me as if he was asking him for instructions of any sort. I don't know what happened out there, but it, it didn't look well enough organized to be able to draw a penalty even when Zorn went back in and took the ball from center. Herman Weaver in punt formation. Colsey's on his own 45. The kick is going to bounce back, the flag down, and it's going to be in Seattle territory, out on the Seattle 40, 21 seconds to go in the half. Punt of 23 yards. Well, there's no doubt. I, I'm sure Oakland would take the punt and, re, and decline the penalty because they would also save seconds. They've only got 21 left. However, if it's against Oakland, that might be a three-point break, and it is against Oakland. It's a personal foul against Oakland. This will give Seattle a first down, and now they can retain possession and run it out in this half, or try and score. Yeah, running it out isn't in their playbook. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 47 defense, first down. That's on Charlie Phillips. Necessary roughness. And it must have happened before the ball was in the air, and that's the only way that uh, Seattle could keep control. Seahawks with a first down on their 32 yard line, trailing 10 to 7, 
in the last 21 seconds of the first half. The pass is complete to the 49-yard line of the Raiders. Steve Rabel, who caught the 38-yard touchdown pass in the first period, grabbed it. The Seahawks call another timeout. They have one left now. That Rabel is a tough nut, Kurt. <laughs> he went down there and he really took a couple licks, jumped right back up. As we mentioned, I don't think running the ball out, running the clock out is in Seattle's playbook. They've got 21 seconds left. They're well in their own territory. One good pass play. They get it up above midfield. Rabel takes the shock and they've got about 12 seconds and they still might get three. Might get more. <laughs> Who knows? The Zorn, I, I wouldn't bet against him on anything. He just... One of the stories of the NFL in his third year, Cal Poly, Un undrafted. Nobody drafted him. He went to the Cowboys right down to the last day before they cut him when they got Preston Pearson from the Steelers. Then to the Rams, they tried to hide him, and the Seattle Seahawks picked him up. And they admit they didn't know what they had. Exactly. But they words, got something. They all said they liked Jim Zorn, right? But it got down to a numbers game. Well. If he'd been what he is today, they may have cut their first stringer and kept him on the football team. So uh, those are justifications for losing a big man. First down, Seattle. On the open 49-yard On the open 49 yard line. The clock starts. It's down to 10 seconds. Nine, eight. Sideline. No good to Testament. Six seconds to go in the first half. Lester Hayes was covering Don Testerman. He was covering Don Testerman, but I, I believe there was a man covering Largent, too. I haven't seen the replay yet. However, they're trying not to let him off the line of scrimmage. Lester Hayes gets a pretty good piece of him. You cannot throw it to a man lying down and pick up many yards. So Zorn just slips it out to Testerman. It wouldn't have been many yards anyway. Now they're down to six seconds. When you hear us talk about a chuck, that was a chuck you saw on Largent when they bumped him and knocked him down. After that, they couldn't touch him again. Five, four, three. It is nearly intercepted by Ted Hendricks. Time is out for the first half. And a well-played first half and a tight one. So the score at halftime in the Oakland Coliseum, the Oakland Raiders 10 and the Seattle Seahawks 7. Now let's go to Brian Gumbel. From Berkeley to Boston, they know the best call on any down. I was open last night. Beer makes it good. There's no debate. Okay. Beer makes it good. Schlitz makes it great. Nobody makes it like Schlitz. Every drop schlagered for quality. 11 million times a day, America reaches for a Schlitz because Schlitz makes it great. Since 1849, there's no debate. When you're out of Schlitz, you're out of beer. Schlitz makes it great. Yeah, when you're making it beer, make it this one here. Schlitz makes it great. I'm Phil Villapiano with the Oakland Raiders. I've been very fortunate to achieve success, but I didn't do it alone. Many people helped me along the way, some by sharing experiences, others by lending support when I needed it most. Now it's my turn to help others, and I'm doing it through the National School Volunteer Program in my community. As a school volunteer, you can help kids of all ages by talking with them about your job, tutoring math, reading, social studies, or foreign languages, and working with kids with special needs. By coming in an hour or more a week, you can help others get ahead. Join a volunteer team in your community. Sharing your time and experience can be very rewarding. 
Right, gang? Right! Right, National School Volunteer Program, Box 1000, Alexandria, Virginia, 22313. The preceding announcement was furnished as a public service by the National Football League. Seattle scored in the first period, capping off an 80-yard drive. Van Egan went over in the second quarter, and then a field goal by Errol Mann of 26 yards is the difference at halftime. And now let's go to Brian Gumbel. All the scores and highlights, NFL 78. Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to our NFL 78 studios in New York. The Jets have upset the Dolphins, the Browns have upset the Rams, and the Chiefs have shut out the Chargers. We'll have highlights of all of those games, as well as the highlights and scores from all the games of Week 13 when we come back following these messages from your local station. Tonight, a fire in the sky. A comet plunges to Earth, and there's nothing anyone can do to stop it. The people of Phoenix are doomed in the most spectacular disaster movie of them all. Richard Crenn and Elizabeth Ashley star in A Fire in the Sky from the author of The Poseidon Adventure. Tonight at 8, 7 Central. something today and you have something tomorrow hi i'm bob holt and that's me doing Big bigfoot's voice that commercial announced pacific bank's five percent regular savings why is it so important because you can keep your savings at pacific bank earn high interest and stop running from one bank to another just do all your banking at bigfoot's bank now you're talking bob we'd like to be it's J.C. Penney's Holiday Fashion Sale. The smartest fashions going are going for a lot less. It's your time to shine in selected smooth disco dresses, only $19.99. Get coordinated. Selected coordinates are now 50% off. Don't say we didn't warm you with selected cashmere sweaters, now specially priced. We've got you covered. All weather coats special, just $32.99. And selected leathers are now priced to clear. These are just a few of the great fashions going for a lot less. Now at larger J.C. Penney stores. This is King Five. Sunday number 13 was a day of upsets and a day of lost expectations. Case of both in Cleveland today where the Browns beat the Rams by a score of 30 to 19. The Rams were hoping for a win to clinch, clinch the NFC West title. Instead, the Browns upset them 30 to 19. Brian Seip threw for 246 yards. And Mike Adamley, you were watching that game. Were the Rams just simply overconfident or were the Brownies playing at that tough? Browns played very tough. Remember, it's Cleveland, Ohio in November, late November, and it's very tough for a West Coast team to come in there and win. Seip was exceptional, though, and he had a lot of time given to him by the Browns' offensive line. Here he hits number 85, Dave Logan. Big pass reception down to the 39-yard line. Two plays later, Seip went back to pass to hit Reggie Rucker. He does. Rucker's all alone in the end zone. That score made it 24-9 in favor of Cleveland. The score is now 24-12. They give it to... Greg Pruitt, number 34, nine carries, 74 yards. Remember, he's been hurt all year round, all year long. But watch this run. He breaks about five tackles, 57 yards in all. Pruitt scores to make it 30 to 12. Then Pat Hayden got the Rams this consolation. Touchdown here. He is flushed out of the pocket by 64. Earl Edwards, 74. Mike Sinclair, finally he unloads this bomb to Ron Jesse in the end zone. But it wasn't enough for Los Angeles. They lose 30 to 19 and drop their record to 10 and 3. The Browns stay alive at 7 and 6. Okay, Mike, after a tough loss last week and three tough quarters in Buffalo today, the Giants finally bellied up. Gave up 21 fourth quarter points to the Bills. Bills beat them 41 to 17 as Terry Miller rush for 208 yards and two scores. The Jets had no such problems coming off a tough defeat last week. They took the rack to Miami today and handed it to the Dolphins 24 to 13 as Matt Robinson threw for 258 yards. And Mike, we knew all along that Matt Robinson could move the offense, but the Jets defense actually chased Greasy out of the ball game today. 
Bob Greasy threw three interceptions. He usually doesn't do that. In fact, he went into the game as the league's leading passer, but he had some problems. Matt Robinson was the man, though. 17 for 26, and this guy was the man, too. 85, Wesley Walker. Here he hooks up with Robinson for a 41-yard pass play. Greasy did throw three interceptions, and one of them was to number 59, third-year linebacker Bob Martin. He rumbles all the way down to the four-yard line before Leroy Harris knocks him out of bounds. Later in the fourth quarter, Robinson got the Jets an insurance touchdown, make it 24-9 with this pass to Wesley Walker in the end zone. And the Jets win a big one, the first time they've swept Miami since 1969, which incidentally was the last time they were in the playoffs. Okay, Mike, two weeks ago, the Atlanta Falcons beat the New Orleans Saints when they scored on the last play from scrimmage. Would you believe they did it again today? They beat them 20-17 to when Steve Bartkowski threw a touchdown pass to Jim Mitchell on the last play from scrimmage of the game. Bartkowski threw for 266 yards on the day. In Green Bay, the Vikings and Packers played for first place honors in the NFC Central today. And and at the end of five periods of play, it wound up 10-10. That's the NFL's first tie in two years when the Vikings, last one was the Vikings tying the Rams two years ago by the same score of 10-10. And Mike, there was a lot of defense in that ball game. Both Dan Meyer and Marco missed field goal attempts in the overtime. It's also the only third time in, since overtime was instituted that an overtime game wound up in a tie. Now both teams are 7-5-1. and one. Defense was the, game of the name of the game, as you said, Bryant. Watch Tarkington here. He gets off the hook, as he always does, but he throws a ball that he probably should not have thrown right into the hands of number 60, John Anderson. Referee said he was in bounds when he caught it. In the second quarter, third and nine situation, David Whitehurst got the Packers on the board, first with this pass to number 80, James Lofton, which was good for 24 yards, and then Turdell Middleton took it in two plays later to make it 7-3. Regulation time wound up, wound up at 10-10, and neither field goal kicker could convert for either Green Bay or Minnesota. San Diego, Kansas City. San Diego was 6-6 six and six going into this game, and they needed a win. They did not get it. The Kansas City Chiefs shut them out 23 to nothing. Great Chiefs defense and good offense. They had problems getting started, though. Mike Livingston was sacked here for 22 yards and a loss by Leroy Jones. They couldn't kick a field goal, but they came back later in the second quarter with the score 3-0. Livingston goes to the air and finds Henry Marshall in the end zone. That made it 10-zip. And then in the fourth quarter, Livingston went back to pass and hit number 80, Larry Dorsey, in the end zone to make it 17 to nothing. Two Jan Stenerud field goals made it 23 zip. The Kansas City Chiefs make Marv Levy happy, and Don Coriel goes back to San Diego wondering what in the heck has happened to his Chargers. Very, very tough team to figure, the Chargers. The Chicago Bears played it like the old monsters in the midway today. They did it with defense and rushing the ball. The Bears got eight sacks to beat Tampa Bay 14 to three, and Peyton and Harper combined for 249 yards on the ground to get the job done. The Philadelphia Eagles stopped the St. Louis Cardinals winning streak at four with a 14-10 win and in the process moved their record to eight and five. They are still in contention for a playoff berth. New England against Baltimore at the half. The Patriots at nine and three are out in front of the Colts 21 to seven. The Colts today had to start Troop at quarterback and Mike for a while there it was a ball game before the Patriots started to assert themselves. Powerful club. Yeah a lot of big plays especially when the Colts and the Patriots get together. Two long interception returns as we see right here in these highlights. First quarter, Colts ball third and one on the 29-yard line. Mike Haynes intercepts this Billy Troop pass on the third play of the day and runs it in for a touchdown to make it 7-0 New England. Later on in the first quarter, third down and seven to go, ball in the Patriots 11. Grogan went back to pass. It's intended for number 81, Russ Francis, but 44, Lyle Blackwood picks it off. Last year, he was the leading interceptor in the AFC Conference. That made it 7-7. Patriots ball now second and nine on the Colt 23. Brogan back to pass. Harold Jackson in the end zone. 21-7 at halftime. New England over Baltimore. Okay, Mike, also at half the game, we've been watching the Oakland Raiders out in front of the Seattle Seahawks, 10-7, seeking revenge for that 27-7 loss a few weeks ago. Cincinnati-Houston at the half. The Oilers on top, 14-10. Mike, let's switch down to you. Earl Campbell has broken the rookie record for rushing. We're going to see his run of about six yards that broke Don Woods' record that he'd set back in 1973. Cincinnati got on the board very quickly. Ken Anderson, third and goal situation, finds Don Bass from the University of Houston, number 84 in the end zone, to make it 7 0. Then here's this run I was talking about, a little more than six yards, too. First down carry, and Earl Campbell continues his fine work. It was 10 0 at this point when. Uh, 
Cincinnati uh, did not score. Houston came back with two Dan Pastorini, or a Coleman run and a Pastorini touchdown pass. Okay, Mike, so at the half, it stands Houston 14, Cincinnati 10. This 1978 National Football League game is brought to you by Schlitz Malt Liquor. Great taste in a classic new bottle. By Chrysler Plymouth, who invites you to see the sporty Plymouth Arrow, Fire Arrow, and brand new Arrow Pickup for 79. And by Noralco Rotary Razors, for a close shave with no nicks, no cuts, no gotcha. Brian Gumbel in New York back with you once again. Let's run down the events of week 13 as we have them right now. The Cleveland Browns beat the Los Angeles Rams today. That was an upset, 30 to 19 in the final. Brian Seip threw for 246 yards. The Buffalo Bills with 27 fourth quarter points overwhelmed the Giants. Final there, 41-17. Terry Miller rushed for over 200 yards. The Jets beat Miami. Final there, 24-13 as Matt Robinson threw for over 250. On the last play of the game, the Atlanta Falcons beat the New Orleans Saints 20-17. Minnesota and Green Bay through five periods battled to a 10-10 tie. Kansas City shut out San Diego by a final of 23 to nothing. Chicago beat Tampa Bay 14 to three. Philadelphia over the Cardinals by a 14-10 score. And three more at the half. New England leading Baltimore 21 to seven. Oakland leading Seattle by a score of 10 to seven. And Houston leading Cincinnati. That one stands at 14 to 10. We've still got a second half of ball game to come in Oakland. We'll get back to it right after this commercial break. Here they come, pouring in from California and Vermont, from Texas, Oklahoma, and Georgia, from all over the country, billions of used aluminum cans headed for recycling. Today, about one out of four aluminum cans is recycled and used again. Tomorrow, maybe one out of three. Someday, maybe every one of them. We can't wait, we can't wait for tomorrow. These are two of today's newest razors. The one on the right is the new Norelco Rotary Razor. This one has two blades. The new Norelco 36. This one pivots up and down. The new Norelco has three adjustable heads that float and a new shaving angle. Both give you a close shave, but there is one thing they offer that Norelco doesn't. Gotcha. The new Norelco Rotary Razor. Very close, but no gotcha. Both teams are back, and we're ready for a second half. With Oakland ahead, 10-7, Jim Zorn getting his arm warmed up. Number 10, that's a reserve running back, Benjamin. Zorn has not had the success today that he had against Oakland and Seattle. He's had a contained pass rush against him. They're not going in there wild on him, and also he's had a linebacker shadowing him. Very carefully defensed today by the Raiders. Yeah, but his attitude hasn't changed, and that's what I like. Uh, I have never seen a team call timeout inside their own 20 with less than 30 seconds to play, and then try to catch the other team with 12 men on the field on a fourth down situation. I can understand them running the clock out, and it's the sort of thing that, that they kind of let Oakland know, folks, we're coming at you. If you give us the ball, we're not trying to hold on to it. We're trying to put it in the other end zone. They've been very effective doing it. Their guys are after this football game. They, they would love to do something that very few teams can ever claim they've done. That's beat Oakland twice. They are giving it their best shot, and Oakland is ready to play them. The last team to beat the Raiders twice in the same season, San Diego. That was back in 1965. And that was at the, I remember that little old field, Frank Yule Field, the high school field, the last year they played. Since the Raiders have moved into this Coliseum, they won 67, lost 12, and tied two at home. Great guy will kick it off. in the face. He's up to the 20. Finds a hole. Runs it out to the 30. What started out as disaster turns into a pretty fair kickoff return for Rufus Crawford where he's down by Harold Hart. I've seen several of those kickoff returns when the when the back fumbles the ball, picks it up a little late. It kind of destroys the whole rush coming down under the kickoff. The last time it happened just before the half put him in a hole. This time they almost broke it. 
The, the time of possession has been a little over 18 minutes for Oakland in the first half and a little under 12 for Seattle. They must contain the ball longer in order to really put it to Oakland. Zorn, the quarterback, Smith, Testerman. It's got to be a screen. Back. It is a screen. It's to the tight end Sawyer, a tight end screen, and he's out to the 41-yard line of Seattle where Mike McCoy, the middle guard, trailed the play. Sawyer's down. Mike McCoy has a big job to do today. That's to handle all the little split, sprint draws when uh, Zorn is rolling out. It's to handle Zorn on any sort of a quarterback draw. It's to survey the area, try and pursue on screens. They don't care too much about the pass rush. He has been in great pursuit all day long, been very responsible for a lot of big plays that's, that the Raiders have made today. And as we see John Sawyer down on the ground, he was down, John. He's up. Now, John Yarno is left on the ground, number 51, the center oh. from Idaho. A fine young center, second year. And they're attending him. Let's take a look at the lineups while we're waiting here. That's the backfield starting the second half, same one that opened the game for Seattle. Their wide receivers, McCullum and Largent, Sawyer, the tight end who just uh, got that pass, and there's the offensive line. And right now, Yarno is on the turf, injured, the center for the Seattle Seahawks. Art Kuhn is coming on. Well, you know, John Yarno has been hurting a little bit, Kurt, the last couple of games, and Rome mentioned that he, he was playing above most people's level, however, far far below his own. And boy, a knee injury is just the worst thing that can happen to an offensive lineman. Well, anybody that's playing this game, really. Well, watch the exchange now. A new center in there. A new center, Art Kuhn. Out of motion. Zorn hands to Sherm Smith, first down. Smith is to the 49-yard line of the Seahawks, where he's taken by Jack Tatum, number 32. First time Tatum's been in the tackle in quite a while. Three-man front with Tuzak, McCoy, and Sistrunk open the second half for the Raiders. Hendrick, young Rod Martin playing in place of Monty Johnson, Willie Hall, Phil Villapiano. Both outside linebackers have been playing well in the first half. And they have to, to really make the job of Lester Hayes and, and uh, Monty Jackson at the corners easier. Comes to Tatum and Phillips. Lauren, rolling right. They pass. Testament. Incomplete this time. Charles Phillips right there with him. It'll be second down 10 for the Seahawks on their 49 yard line. Yards rushing. Testament number 42. He's back to the left of Seahawks. Due to technical difficulties, the sound portion of your program is temporarily impaired. It is not your set. Please bear with us. We're working on it.
The audio and video portions of our program have been temporarily interrupted. We hope to have the problem corrected momentarily. Please stand by. jumps far in the air, pulls the ball down, and that is a big turnover, folks. That's the first turnover charged to Seattle. Hendricks is six feet seven, and he was up in the air, too. The stork. Stabler goes on first down with a blitz against him, and he throws it away, skidding out of bounds with Dave Casper at the tight end. But there was a big rush there by the left linebacker on a blitz, Sammy Green of Florida. Kurt, we mentioned they've been they've been changing up their defenses, trying to give the quarterbacks on both both squads a different look as often as they can. They know they've given Stabler too much time to throw the ball in the first half. He's had a good first half. They've moved the ball at will. They changed up that time since Sammy Green with no one no one there to handle him. Stabler had to hurry the ball. I'll say one thing, Van Egan picked up that other blitzer, didn't he? Oh, he'll pick him up, but he can't pick up two. Second down, ten. The pass is to Chester, the tight end, and it's incomplete. Chester was arguing that he was wrapped around by Keith Butler and Autry Beeman, but they were both going for the ball with Chester. Well, he was wrapped around by him, but he, not until the ball hit Chester on the hands. It's a very difficult catch to make. It's a tough throw to make also. You see, they put two people on a tight end all day long for Oakland, whether it be Chester or Casper. It doesn't change the assignment. Santa for the right tackle goes out. Cronin is a fourth linebacker in the game. Third and ten, the Raiders on the Seattle 45. Now Keith Thompson's in there as a nickel back. Three wide receivers for the Raiders. The pass to Branch, he can't hold on to it. Branch right in front of Dave Brown and tipped his hands. Dave Brown made an amazing play then, Kurt. I have never seen a defensive back face, well, I call it face guarding. They're face to face. Brown turned his back to Stabler, did not watch where the ball was going to be thrown, instead was on branch the whole time, never raised his hand so it wouldn't be called face guarding. That's a unique way to cover a wide receiver. Ray Guy in punt formation. Guy has placed 19 of his punts inside the 20-yard line this year. He kicks them high, he kicks them long, and now he's becoming a placement expert. Next thing to be kicking him to the moon. This one wobbles down to Rufus Crawford on the eight, to the 10, to the 15. And Crawford's up to the 18-yard line where he's down by Derek Ramsey, a rookie tight end from Kentucky. Timeout, Seattle will take over. Our score remains Oakland 10, Seattle 7. Zorn will be the quarterback. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League, and it's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Oakland Raiders and the National Football League is prohibited. Well, we have three uh, big games for you on NBC. They're all big. They're all upsets anymore. But we have Miami at Washington next Sunday, an early game on NBC, starting with NFL 78 at 1230. We have two games that will begin with NFL 78 at 330 Eastern Time. New England at Dallas, both division leaders, and Pittsburgh at Houston. Three outstanding attractions. I hope you'll be tuned in to NBC next Sunday for Washington NFL football. Seattle at the Seahawks 19. 
18 yard line. Kurt Gowdy and John Brody here in the Oakland Coliseum as the Seattle Seahawks come up. Duke Ferguson is a wide receiver in place of Sam McCullum. Zorn hands the ball to Sherm Smith. Smith stopped on his 25. John Matuzak rode across the field with him and dropped him. Sherm Smith has seven carries, 28 yards. The Seahawks have not done too much on the ground today. They have not. However, since the second half got underway, Kurt, they've run the ball three times. They've picked up four, five, six yards of crack. If that's an indication, they could get some of that ball control they know they need. Large in a spread right. Duke Ferguson to the left. Second down three. Hendricks may be offside. Left linebacker was coming. Sherm Smith took the ball where he was hit by Sistrunk and Martin. Looked like from here that Hendricks may have jumped. Offside against Oakland. We've had very few penalties in the first half. Seattle penalized twice 15 yards. Oakland four times 40 yards, mostly holding. Now New England's out in front. 28-14, Bill Troop just hit Ron Lee. Offside, 83, defense, first down. It was on Hendricks. And that'll give uh, the Seahawks a first down on their 30. It's ironic how many times you catch the really outstanding defensive linemen and linebackers offsides. They almost get a feeling and a sense of when that quarterback is going to call that call for that ball. And they do get caught on occasion. Rabel's in as a wide receiver. Running out of the eye, Zorn will throw. Uh, his man fell down over there. Sam McCollum got up, couldn't get to the ball, number 84. Second down, 10. Jackson is covering the play for the Raiders. Second and 10. The report on the center, Yarno. The report on the center, Yarno. A sprained knee. And Yarno probably will not return to this game. His place has been taken by Art Kuhn at center. Second down, 10. There's Mr. Kuhn. Line of scrimmage, Seattle 30. Sherm Smith. Oh, he's going to go down. Back on the 21. Ted Hendricks there, making up for the offside. So he's made two big plays there defensively in the third period. Ted Hendricks made that play because John Matusik stuffed the whole right side of the, of the Seattle Seahawks line. Take a look at here. Testament's trying to block on Matusik. Matusik just pushes him about four or five yards in the backfield. Nobody was able to get to Hendricks, and he pulls him down for a big loss. It is third down and 17. Norm Evans goes in, replacing Steve August at right tackle. Rabel on the field. Free wide receiver attack for Seattle. being chased down there all the way by Willie Brown. Oh, Willie can still run. He was the fifth back on the field, and uh, he's only been around 16 years in this National Football League. You give Zorn just a little bit more time to throw that ball, and he may have had Zabel, but Tusick forced him to throw it a little bit earlier than he would have liked to. Punt formation, Herm Weaver. safety man a beautiful kick by Weaver Colsey drifting back to his 25 out of the 30 and he's down there on the 32 33 yard line Steve Rabel was covering the punt on top of him and we're going to have a timeout on the field 11 15 to play in the third period it is Oakland 10 Seattle 7 Final in an overtime, Minnesota and Green Bay wound up 10 to 10. Chester Markle missed a 40 yard field goal with 21 seconds remaining. And John, that's the first regular season overtime since 76 tie 
when L.A. and Minnesota wound up in a 10-10 tie. And Minnesota should be thankful to have it because uh, if that game had gone 59 minutes and 50 seconds, it would have been 10-3. to So it was a big game for Minnesota. Keeps them right in the race. And we're looking at Otis Sistrunk, Mike McCoy, and their other cohort, cohort John Matusik. Those three guys have played a whale of a ball game. First down on the 32. <laughs> Charles Filia, 6'9", the tallest player this year in the NFL. Oakland holding on to a slender three-point lead. Oh, number 58, Terry Beeson, hitting Mark Van Egan. Beeson has been a standout today as a middle linebacker for the Seahawks. We mentioned earlier just in the beginning of the game that Oakland's greatest success would probably be going wide with Whittington. It's worked out that way, and I think Terry Beeson is the one guy that can re really handle running plays up the middle. It's almost like having a fifth lineman. Beeson's out. Sammy Green's out. Keith Thompson's in as a fifth back, and Sandifer comes in. Four down linemen now. A little more rush on Staver to Whittington. Look out, he's hit and he stopped at the 29-yard line of the Raiders by Keith Butler, who came charging up there from his right linebacker position. ...position to make the hit. He's a rookie from Memphis State. Now the Raiders are third and 13. And both clubs are having trouble moving the ball against the other in this third. Both teams' defense know that the burden is right on them. Now Seattle has six secondary backs. Kerry Justin of Oregon State's on the field. And what are they looking for? It's not a run. Well, they're trying to get a little help with those backs covering those tight ends instead of putting linebackers on them. They were back. He has all the time. His pass sails wide to Fred Belitnikov. Oakland will have to punt. Fred Belitnikov, fourth leading receiver of all time in the NFL. Become a spot player this year. Rufus Crawford is back to receive Ray Guy's punt. Ray had an average 29 yards, which is way down for him. He's a leading punter in the NFL. 44 yards. And he'll try and boot one this time. There's a flag drop, and he shanks it. He hits it on top of his foot, but he gets a roll on it to the 31. Crawford up to dropped to the 37 of Seattle by Pete Banasak. So we had a flag dropped at the line of scrimmage when the kick went away. And in all defense of Ray Guy, also Kurt, that one that 29-yard average includes a block punt, and also. Herman Weaver has really got it put on him because if he can keep keep a standoff with Raymond Guy, he has done his job. That's quite a chore to keep a standoff right. with Ray Guy. He did a good job the last time he punted the ball. I think he got 52 yards out of it, but he's got to almost consistently do that to keep with a guy like Raymond. The Seahawks have declined a motion penalty. First down. They'll take the ball on their own 37-yard line with a first down. We have two second-string linemen in there. Art Kuhn at center for the Seahawks. Norm Evans at right tackle. McCullum to the left. Largent is to the right as the wide receivers. Testerman and Sherm Smith are the running backs. Thorne fakes to Testerman. Testament for a first down, wriggling to the 44-yard line. They're going to drop him at the 45 of Oakland. A well-conceived play by Seattle. Very well-conceived. Rodney Martin was all over the up back. He thought he was going to get the ball as he faked it off. Testament just slipped on through. He put it just over the top. You've got to fool those Raider linebackers in order to beat them, and he did it on that play. Here we go. He slips. See, Testament kind of looks like he's going to handle Rodney Martin. And that's his man. He puts it right over the top, and they've got a first. Seattle on the Oakland 44-yard line. Trailing by three. Smith is hammered.
Howard down by 77, Charles Filia, who sort of clubbed him down. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. You're watching KING TV, Seattle. Kurt Gowdy and John Brody in Oakland Coliseum. Oakland leading 10 7. 8.35 to play in this quarter. Seattle's ball on the Oakland 43 yard line. With second down and nine. Ron Howard is the tight end. Rabel's into the wide receiver. Largent going in motion. Number 80 back to the ball. And the pitch is to Largent. Largent is. Bulldog down on the 36 of Oakland by Lester Hayes, who followed him across the field, the left cornerback. You see, that's just another indication, Kurt, of how many more crossing patterns you see using your wide receivers. When they put that one chuck rule into effect, and don't let anyone touch those wide men once they get five yards down the field, those linebackers quit batting them around, and those little, def those little offensive receivers can catch a lot of balls. They have a... Third and two, they take out wide receivers and they put in an extra tight end, Sawyer, and an extra tackle, Bullard is a tight end. And they give it to Testament to make the first down and he does not have it. He may be stopped at the Oakland 35-yard line by Sistrunk and McCoy. However, I feel quite certain there will be a fourth down and one foot play right here. Fourth down and a foot to go for Seattle on the Oakland 35. Seattle has 41 yards rushing today to 99 for Oakland. Seattle's a gambling club on fourth down. He even went for it deep on territory. Fourth and inches and made it in the first half. Brown Roaring, hold him. Testament. And he may be stopped again. Sistrunk made the hit. We have mentioned how Sistrunk and Matusik have a big job in front of them today, along with McCoy. That time, Sistrunk stood up the offensive guard, was able to pursue over to the right side to make the play, but caused the fumble, and Teddy recovered. All right, it's off to Van Egan. Van Egan out to the 40. Hendricks now has intercepted a pass, recovered a fumble in the third period, and made a key defensive tackle. And Hendricks' right leg seems to be injured. And also limping off is Morris Bradshaw, the wide receiver. Banasak will come in to replace Van Egan. Bolitnikoff is coming in to replace Bradshaw. Heather scores around the NFL. Cleveland beat Los Angeles 30-19. Buffalo wallop the Giants 41-17. The Jets upset Miami 24-13. This is second down and two. Banasak hitting straight ahead a yard. And that's it for the veteran. Atlanta over New Orleans 2017. Same score both games against New Orleans. That's a tie. They played in overtime. Green Bay missed a field goal of 41 yards with 40 seconds to go, and it wound up a 10-10 tie. And they're tied for first place in the Central Division. Kansas City stopped San Diego's four-game winning streak. They shut them out, 23-0. The Bears down Tampa Bay, 14-3. Philadelphia ended the Cardinals four game winning streak 14 to 10 New England ahead of Baltimore 28 14 in the third period right here we have a third and a foot to go Houston finally got ahead of Cincinnati that's close it's close but I'm afraid it's no cigar Dennis Boyd and Bill Sandifer the inside men yep Piled it was up. he made it the Raiders ball on their own 43 with a first down score 10 7 Raiders 550 to play in the third period
committed the sin of not catching the ball first. Because he had run an excellent pattern, Kurt. He got down on Terry Beeson, took him about 12, 13 yards down the field, came back, was in perfect position to pick up a long gainer. Those are the kind of stop drives. He's replaced by Harold Hart, not as a punishment, but to get something new in the game. Van Egan is at his bell rung, a little dizzy, they say, but he should be back. He figures on Ken Stabler. He's 0 for 5 this period. Three of his passes have been dropped by receivers. This one's to the sideline, and there's a man that doesn't drop him. Fred Belitnikov. <laughs> Bit short of a first down. Freddie made a he made a mistake that he very rarely makes. I do not mean it would have been easy for him to pick up the first down. However, he made a miscalculation of about three feet that kept him from making a first down. Put the ball about two feet short of. As you see, look, he thinks. Whoops! Now he's in. Now he can't get back to the first down marker. Third down and a foot to go. Oakland on the Seattle 47. Three tight ends. Bankston, Chester, and Casper for blocking power. And they stop him cold. Banasak stopped short of the first down. Terry Beeson led the charge up front. There's uh, the injured center Yarno going into the locker room on crutches with a sprained knee. They'll measure anyway. It's a period uh, to have it. They don't. They're a half yard short. Fourth down and a half yard to go. When it's 10 to 7 and you've got control of a football game and their defense is stuffing Seattle's offense right now, I think it's a good play. Ray Guy will come in the punt. Rufus Crawford dropping back as a single safety. 5-19 to play in the third period. Guy's poorest kicking day of the season. They're going after him. He aims it for the near sideline, and it is skipping out of bounds on the 16 yard line of the Seahawks where they'll put the ball in play with the first down. Let's take a timeout. The score, Oakland 10, Seattle 7. Out of bounds for 16. The Grand Prix of Bowling, Sunday, December 9th on NBC, 4 to 6 Eastern Time, 1 to 3 Pacific Time. Reno, Nevada, this is the last and perhaps the most prestigious national bowling tournament of the year and the only pro tournament that features both men and women. The purse, $100,000. Earl Anthony, Dick Weber, Mark Roth, Gay Robinson, Virginia Norton among the women, and Betty Moore. Jim Simpson will be the host for the Grand Prix of Bowling Sunday, December 9th on NBC at 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. ball 16 yard line first down we've had a scoreless third period now they spread that backfield of Testament and Smith Testament with the ball and he gets about six or seven yards as he rolls out to his 22 yard line where he was met by Willie Hall and Charlie Phillips Let's give him seven on it. Second down three. Ron Howard in a tight end, replacing John Sawyer for Seattle. McCollum and Larkin are the wide receivers.
him, but they usually try to pick on Villapiano if it's some sort of bootleg. They know he's a very impulsive linebacker. However, as of the last three or four games, he seems to have stopped all that stuff. He's handling his area to the utmost, and he brings Zorn down before he can get outside. Bill Villapiano injured his knee last year, has come back there, wanted to prove to everybody that he was physically able, and so was running all over the field, chasing everything that moved. Now he's settled back down, is playing his zone position there, and his third down, nine, five secondary backs on the field. Willie Brown's out there. Zorn will throw for the first down. Oh, a great grab by Sam McCollum. Number 84 coming across from Montana State. And Zorn had the strike right to him. Boy, that's about as good a catch as you'll see, and it's certainly as fine a catch as we've seen this afternoon. It's one thing to catch a ball going through the air, but he's very liable to catch Jack Tatum, who's coming the other way. When you leave your feet, you are nothing but fodder out there. Tatum was just a little late getting to the ball, and McCullough made a great catch. We didn't have two left-handed starters opposing one another in any game of the World Series this year, but we got one in a football game. Zorn against Stabler. And Zorn just fired for the first down. 10 to 7, Oakland ahead. Zorn comes out of that pocket, 35, 40. And he's down on the 40-yard line by Ted Hendricks. Uh, he hurt Oakland. He's hurt a lot of tough clubs coming out of that pocket. However, this is the first time he's been able to go up underneath the underneath the pass rush all day. Generally, when he gets in trouble, he finds a way to get free. Today, however, McCoy, Sistrunk, Matusik, they've been standing around waiting for him at the line of scrimmage and still able to put a pretty good pass rush on Zorn. That was the first time he's broken free for about six and a half. John, up at Seattle, he ran six times for 63 yards against the Raiders. That last play gained six for the Seahawks. They're on their 40-yard line with a second down and four. He fakes the handoff. Now he'll run again. He's at the 40. He's at the 45, and he has a first down on his 46-yard line. And you can Get see Phil Charlie Phillips. <laughs> Phil Yaw, Matusik, McCoy, all those three are back there hitting their, putting their fist on the ground because Zorn's pattern has, has been destroyed two plays in a row. However, on the two plays, he's picked up a first down, kept Seattle's drives alive, even looking for a little help. There you see Lynch coming up to try and help out. Picks up the first, and their drive is still going. They're on their own 46 with a first down. A minute 25 to go in the third quarter. Oakland ahead by three. Back he goes again. A short one out to Smith, 50. Smith knocked down just short of the Oakland 45 by Ted Hendricks. Well, he's been very effective throwing to his deep receivers throughout the season. Oakland, as a retaliation, has put their linebackers into the deep secondary. This is the first time that he's thrown short to a back, both backs crossing each other, forces the linebackers to come up and make the tackle late. Could be effective. He may do more of it. Testaments off the field, and Al Hunter, number 24, replaces him. Second down, a short yard to go. Sawyer getting over there on the right side. A strong right with a tight end on the right. There's Al Hunter, and he has a first down to the 38-yard line. Oakland got a little help. Oakland got their 12th man on the field. Got the official into the act. He still picked up seven. You can see pretty good block at the point of attack. Left tackle, Bebout. However, nobody's on the official, and he brings him down. <laughs> Number 89. <laughs> a timeout. And the end of the third period in the Oakland Coliseum with the Seahawks on the move and the score, Oakland 10, Seattle 7. This drive started on the 
Seahawks 16 yard line. And here's the man that's led it, running, passing, getting some help. Brilliant catch by Sam McCullum. Some good running also by Al Hunter. Al Hunter, Testament's caught a short ball, picked up some good yardage. Sherman Smith's done a fine job. He's using everyone, and he needs to use everyone. This isn't like the game in Seattle, where Oakland had prepared for Jim Zorn, but they still figured themselves to be a much better football team. Seattle is not going to sneak up and get by anybody any longer. They know everything they get they deserve. They're starting to pick up chunks. This is the second drive they put together in the second half. However, the first one came out with no points with a, with a turnover by Hendricks. They're moving the ball pretty well now. It does two things. It puts them in scoring territory and keeps Oakland from getting the ball. The 11-year-old winner is from running Ken Schenberg. Our 12-year-old winner comes from Hanford, Mario Salas. We enter the fourth period. Kurt Gowdy and John Brody in the Oakland Coliseum. With the score, 10-7 Oakland, we had a scoreless third quarter. The Seattle Seahawks have now marched 46 yards, sparked by number 10 down there on his knee, Jim Zorn, running and passing. They'll have a first down on the Raider 38. This crowd is getting anxious here now in the Oakland Coliseum. They don't like the looks of things. Smith and Hunter are the running backs. That's Al Hunter. Hunter, who weighs 195, has inside power. They use him a lot on third down plays, and he can get that first down for you. He was tackled by Otis Sistrunk. Right after this game coming up will be the Sperry NFL report. The ball is spotted on the Oakland 34-yard line. Seahawks with a second and six. Don Testerman back in from Clemson. His college had a big year, winning 10 and losing one this season. There's the rollout. Passes to Testerman. Testerman is ganged up on by Phillips. Willie Hall, two men in the secondary, brought him down on the 31-yard line of the Raiders. And you have got to be alert to handle a back coming out of the backfield like this. Zorn wastes very little time in coming to Testament. Short, short fake to Smith. He puts the ball there. Testament picks it up. And in trying to elude Willie Wood, he doesn't even see Phillips, who gets him just past the line of scrimmage. This is a third down and a short three. Houston ahead of Cincinnati now in the third quarter after they were trailing 10-0. There's that deep handoff, and Smith has the first down. Or close. <laughs> it looks and like I a thought first. he had it. I think it looks like a first. You notice the deep handoff to Smith out of the eye or wherever he is back. Uh, Zorn comes back deep and Smith looks for the hole and then goes. Well, you've got to. There are a few holes and very few today for either side. But in order to find them, you must have the option to go off your off your offensive lineman's block. Being six, seven yards deep. It gives you an opportunity to do this. It looks as if he's got a first down by about two inches. However, he may, he may, may he just missed it by an inch. Short by an inch. They moved that ball back on him. He extended the ball out there when he was hit and dropped down. So John Sawyer, Louis Bullard come in to form three tight ends. Tight ends, Al Hunter's in the backfield. Well, Seattle we go. Seattle's one out of a, one out of two. Fourth down and an inch to go. The Seahawks on the 28 and a half of the Raiders. We have four down linemen now. Al Hunter, he has it. Hunter bucks to the 27-yard line of the Raiders. Art Kuhn and Tom Lynch were wedge blocking for him out in front. Move the yard sticks down. Seattle in the midst of a drive that has started on their 16 yard line. Jack Patera, <laughs> little clap of the hand, that's about all the emotion he shows over. Now look at the other man, Madden. This will be the 12th play of the Seattle drive. 
on the Oakland 27 yard line. 10 to 7, Oakland ahead. There's the fake to Smith. Zorn is throwing wide open. Largent, touchdown. Largent for the score. That's just as good a pattern as you can run. Any, any offensive receiver would tend to get a little antsy on a pattern like that. Largent went all the way down the field and came back as if he was coming to Zorn just as the, as the cornerback Hayes took his eye off of uh, Largent, put it on Zorn. Zorn snuck behind him, was running totally free. That's the way you execute. A six touchdown for Steve Largent. That fake helped set it up. It's, it helped a little bit, but when Zorn gets outside, there's a lot of things he can do, and a cornerback is really stuck in a bind. Third catch for Largent today, the kick by Herrera. The kick is up, and it is good. And Seattle has just driven 84 yards, scored. They've taken the lead. Timeout, 12.20 to play. It is now Seattle 14 and Oakland 10. And they're over there congratulating Largent and Zorn. Largent really was open, his sixth touchdown pass of the season. They should congratu congratulate Large. And listen, Zorn executed it. He got the ball down there. But all 28 quarterbacks in the National Football League could have completed that pass. And that had to be very well designed. Now, you find situations when you can use a play like that. It's a first down. It looks like it's a ball control situation. Largent goes down, comes back, then turns around and goes into the end zone. That's just a, that's a beautiful pattern. Largent not drafted high. The eighth round out of the University of Tulsa, number 80, now has 922 yards of pass receptions this year. Where do you find them? Well, they're around. Just look hard. And then let them play. Seahawks now will kick it off. They have taken the lead, 14 to 10. A 12-play drive of 84 yards, brilliantly maneuvered by Jim Zorn, the quarterback. He is something, this kid. There's a kickoff, a scribbler rolling around, fielded by Hart on the 12, up to the 20, 25, and is pulled down on the 30-yard line. He's hit there by Kerry Justin, number 26. We are experiencing temporary problems with the audio portion of our telecast. We will continue with the video portion of the program and hope to have the problem corrected shortly. Please stand by. I wouldn't feel too comfortable if I was Harris. just to make sure he followed Stabler. He could, he could feel pressure. Stabler goes back. He's trying to get downfield. He's very well covered by the... His receivers are well covered by the secondary. He's got enough time. Nobody's open. The door is closed. Reached the 25, a pickup of seven, but they're short of 15 for a first down. But most of the patterns, Kurt, you'll notice for Oakland are designed to go 15, 16, 17 yards, not 20 or 21 or 22. He called some sort of play to get him into a situation where one good play, he could pick up a first down without having to change his offense. That was the first completion in the second half for Ken Stabler. Madden says, come on, let's get that first down. Keith Simpson replaces Sammy Green, a linebacker. Simpson, the secondary back. And three wide receivers on the field for the Raiders. They're trying to blitz Stabler, so he has to roll. The pass is caught for a first down. 
brilliantly by Dave Casper. Boy, that's a beautiful play because Staber got hit just as he threw. He threw it right in the area that, that Casper had to find. He was, he was forced out of the pocket. This is something you very seldom see with Stabler. It could have been by design. I happen to think it wasn't. Ernie Price puts good pressure on Stabler, throws him, throw, throws him down just as he threw it. Casper's got a first down, and their drive's alive. We understand some of the West Coast stations are having transmission problems. The NBC engineering crew is working on it. We hope to correct it as soon as possible. First down, Oakland on their 45. They're behind in the game, 14 to 10. The pass sideline. Bradshaw held on to it. His forward motion stopped on the 45-yard line of Seattle. And how he was hit by Cornell Webster from behind. That took concentration. Cornell Webster had good position on this ball. Earlier in the season, I'm not sure Stabler was throwing the ball with as much zip on it as he threw this one. From the time he decides to throw to when that ball's gone, he's as quick as there is in this game. Webster was in good position. He just put it where nobody else could get it but Bradshaw. The Raiders have a first down. Whittington is out, Hart is in. Bradshaw is out, Bolitnikoff's in. They're on the Seattle 45. This is Hart. Hart cuts it and is out of bounds on the Seattle 39 and a half, driven out by the left end, Ernie Price. That'll make it second down and four to go. Put it on the 40, they spot it. Second down and five to go. Time, 9-18 to play. Seattle leading 14 to 10. How many times have you seen Oakland in this similar situation in the Oakland Coliseum? I have not seen them come up short very often either. Well, not when you win 67 and lose 12 since they moved <laughs> in here. Davis pass pops out of the hands of Branch. That's about three that Branch has dropped today, right in his hands. Branch seems to be having a little trouble with his footing out there. He started to run just a little bit before he got that ball, trying to put a maneuver on the cornerback. Both sides have been guilty of that once or twice. Branch has caught four for 60 yards, but not that one. All the fans that are just joining us were here in the fourth period in the Oakland Coliseum. This is Kurt Gowdy and John Brody. Oakland is behind. Seattle just drove 84 yards to score. Third and five for the Raiders. The pass, a knockdown, uh, falling down in the 25 is uh, 81 Bradshaw. They were trying to get the ball to him, and he went down under his own power. Kerry Justin played them very well. They were in a five or six back defense. You must, in order to get those those receivers as they get off the line of scrimmage, stick with them. He stuck with them like a shadow and uh, forced him to change his route two or three times. That's too many. The young Seattle Seahawks are trying to do something no team has done to the Raiders since 1965. Beat them twice in the same season. They've defeated Oakland 27 to 7 in Seattle, and they're ahead here 14 to 10. Ray Guy and punt formation on fourth and five. And he drives that one deep. And that is into the end zone for the touchback. It'll be Seattle's ball first down on the Seattle 20. And we'll take a timeout. There are nine minutes to play. The score, Seattle 14, Oakland 10. Just a reminder about those games coming up next Sunday on NBC. Among the early games will be an interesting interconference affair between Miami and Washington. Miami was upset today, and we have two great games at 4 o'clock Eastern time. And in, in mentioning the, the Miami-Washington game, it's big for either team. It looks like it might determine whether one of those teams gets a wild card spot. And not only that, now we've got New England at Dallas. It looks like both those teams could be champions of their respective conferences. Then we have Pittsburgh at Houston. How long has Houston been wanting to crack at Pittsburgh? Well, they beat Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh. Now, they were behind today, Houston. They went ahead of Cincinnati. If they hold on there, they'll be 9-4. and four. Pittsburgh plays here in San Francisco tomorrow night. Uh, and I think both teams might have been looking a little bit ahead. You know, they're both playing 1-11 and 11 football teams. They know they've got a big game next week. 
You must remember to win the one you're playing. Those people that have just joined us that were watching the New England Baltimore game, if there's any change there in Baltimore, we'll bring you up to date on it. First down for the Seattle Seahawks. Zorn to Sherman Smith. Smith dropped him at 21. He's hit by Ted Hendricks, who's been absolutely brilliant today, chasing plays from sideline to sideline. This is about as well a played football game, Kurt, with as low a score as we have as I've seen in some time. I, it is true that some, uh, there have been a few balls dropped. However, defensively, linebackers have come up with big plays time and again. Beeson's having a big day. Hendricks is having a big day. And I'll be very surprised if Jim Zorn sits on a four-point lead. Sam Cunningham just ran five yards for a touchdown. New England 35, Baltimore 14. Now they're tied in left. That makes a strong left formation. Second down, nine. Zorn with a great fake. Throwing deep to Largent. Largent. Incomplete. He's out of bounds, juggling the ball out, and a drop, an incomplete. But what a fake by Jim Zorn. That's what he does. He was well covered by Monty. Monty. Monty Jackson, Largent made the move. He knew when Zorn was coming toward him, the worst thing he could do is run toward the receiver. He tried to spread the distance between he and Zorn. So if Zorn decided to run, he could. It turned Monty Jackson's back, but he made a fine defensive play to catch, catch Largent before he could bring the ball in. Well, I can see we've talked to a lot of players that have played against Zorn, defensive players, the Steelers, Denver, players like that. And they say this kid drives you nuts, Zorn. Rolling out, running quarterback draws, faking the ball, play action pass. Here he is rolling left. He fires the ball. He's got his receiver, McCullum, for a first down. And that's what they want. They want first downs now to use the clock up. I'll tell you, if we get a look at his throwing motion here, it's this is picture perfect. Very few people can throw the ball with as much velocity on it running sideways as they can standing still. In fact, I know no one. However, that ball had as much zip as any ball throughout the day. John Madden, anxious. His team has won eight, lost four. Denver's won eight, lost five. San Diego is beaten today, and Seattle can be just a game behind them. If they hold on to this lead, they'll break the 500 barrier. Smith dropped at the 35, and he's hit there by the big end, Charles Filia, six feet nine and 270. That's a loss of three at second and 13. Time remaining, 7.45. Seattle leading, 14 to 10. Seattle's had two outstanding drives today, 84 yards and 80 yards. Both drives culminated by touchdown passes. Zorn to Rabel of 38, and then Zorn to Largent of 27. Second and 13. Smith. Two or three, and that's all. Rod Martin in there, John Matuzak, 72, the left end. It will be spotted on the 38-yard line of the Seahawks, third and 10. Coming up right after this game, the Sperry NFL Report. They'll have all the highlights, details of what happened today around the NFL. The New England Baltimore fans, we switched out here, a tighter game. We'll keep you abreast of the New England score in Baltimore. New England leading 35-14. Zorn on third and 10. Looks the field over, it's hit by 76. Mike McCoy. McCoy deflected at the line of scrimmage. The veteran of Notre Dame, his ninth year, comes to the sideline. And I think going into the game, Mike McCoy knew this was the biggest game he's played in the last couple of years. He's been used sparingly. He's come in since Dave, Dave Rowe was removed. This is the best game he's had. He's made four or five individual tackles. He has allowed nobody to run the draw on him. He's kept Zorn from going up the middle, and he's forced big turnovers. Punt formation for Herm Weaver. The driving spiral to Colsey. Takes it on the 30. 35. Keeps going. And 
and is driven out of bounds. He's hit there by Steve Rabel, 83, who put the final bang on him. So the Raiders will take over in their own territory. The time remaining is 624, and the score, Seattle 14, Oakland 10. Kurt, you know, neither team has been able to make any yardage running the ball. It almost looks as if you, they need bayonets to get anything going out there. Uh, both, both sides, defensively, in the interior line, have ruled the line of scrimmage throughout this second half. Now, you would imagine they could run the ball at least a bit on either side since both teams are throwing the ball so effectively. So far, it hasn't, it hasn't come to pass. Don't forget the big fight, the Sports World Special Edition, Saturday, December 2nd. Matty Parlow against Marvin Johnson. Parlow from Yugoslavia, 122. Lost one, had one draw. Johnson's a powerful punching 24 year old and that will be on Saturday December 2nd NBC Sports World a special edition starting at four o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Now yeah, let's see what Staber uncorks now. There's the score. The time is 624 to play. The Raiders are on their 38 yard line with a first down. And they just got their 12th man off the field. Staber will go right to work on him. Big rush on him. The screen is to Van Egan. 45, 50, 45, and he's down to the 42 yard line. Van Egan really running under control power. Brought down by Butler and John Harris. Also a beautifully conceived screen. This time when they call Van Egan's number, he was definitely home. You see, he's he slipped Ernie Price into the backfield. That's the key. They got the defensive end. They contained the defensive tackle. The linebackers have to have to try and get up, and make the play. He gets through them, picks up a big first down for Oakland with 5.46 left. A 20-yard screen play. The Raiders first down, Seattle 42. Staver to the sideline. Branch has it on the 35. Branch is out of bounds on the 31. Driven out by Autry Beeman. The fifth catch for Cliff Branch today. He didn't drop that one. Well, Kurt, I, Reggie Jackson sitting up here, and he said if our receivers drop anymore, we may have to make a designated hitter out of a few of them. <laughs> so they're hanging on to those, and this is the critical time of the ball game. And uh, when Reggie says our... He may not be with the Oakland A's anymore, but I know he's been a Raider fan for a long time. That's why he's here. First down, Raiders trailing 14 to 10. They're on to Seattle 31. Faber trying to pull one of his pat and come from behind win. He's going deep to Casper. He's there. Catch of the game for Casper. Last year he caught 46 all season long. Look at him grab this one deep for a tight end, a deep pattern, and Oakland has grabbed the lead back again. But Seattle, there's the 50th reception. Don't go away, folks. I think there'll be more. They kick by Earl Mann. David Hum will spot it for him. To go yet, 5:29, and the kick is no good. A field goal can wipe it out now. Earl Man it's the point. Timeout in Oakland. A little seat squirming time with the score. Oakland 16, Seattle 14. The big thing is we won't have a tie under all probability a tie would kill both these squads because in the AFC in order to get in either in the title or into a playoff Oakland knows they have
have to be Denver. All right, and they can't afford a tie today because if they did lose to Denver, their case is closed. On the other hand, Seattle at six losses has an outside chance to get in a playoff berth. They must win all these ball games. I don't think either team wants a tie. Well, Oakland did it quickly on that drive. Starting on their 42 yard line, 20 yard screen to pass the branch. And then boom, the 31 yarder to Casper for the touchdown to take the lead. And the Oakland defense now will be out there trying to stop Zorn and his attack. Ray Guy will kick off. And we have Rufus Crawford and Al Hunter back deep. Crawford's 34, Hunter's 24. Three plays and 62 yards went the Raiders. A high kick by Guy. It's coming to Crawford. He's out to the 10. He gets to the 20. And down he goes. Snowed under by Blackshirt and Raiders. On the 24-yard line, John Huddleston led the charge for the Raiders. Remember next week, Big doubleheader, Baltimore and the Jets, Miami and Washington, the early game, Buffalo and Kansas City, 1.30, NFL 78, 3.30, Eastern Time, NFL 78, then Pittsburgh and Houston, Cleveland at Seattle, New England at Dallas. What a lineup of late games on NBC next Sunday. First down, Seattle. This is an exciting club, Seattle. They're going to a tight end right, strong right formation. Zorn asked for time, and they had one timeout left. They took a timeout in the third period. That just credit that to the Oakland defense. There are a few things that Zorn is not prepared to handle when he gets into certain formations. That time it was Ted Hendricks who slipped underneath. He didn't have a back to pick him up. He had to call timeout. I'm sure they had a pass play call. Well, we've seen them twice, and we say the Seahawks are exciting. They're exciting on both offense and defense. In fact, they giveth as well as they take it away, plenty of real estate. <laughs> they've averaged, get this, one of the top scoring on the high-powered offensive teams, they've averaged 338 yards a game of total offense this year, and they've allowed 338 yards on total defense. It's the kind of team you like to watch. Well, it is. And, and they've, they've won six and lost six. Does that tell you anything? Well, it tells me Jim Zorn is a new play and a new method of attack as he comes back to the huddle. The kid has hit 16 out of 28 for over 200 yards, two touchdown passes. He now has 12 touchdown passes on the season. Roger Staubach is the leader after 12 weeks in the NFL with 20 touchdown passes. Bradshaw had 19 touchdown passes. First down Seattle. They're trailing by two. They're on their 24. He faked the Smith, he throws it out to Testament, and he misses him. Over his head at the 38. Hendricks was trying to cover Testament, and he had a couple of steps on Hendricks. Well, he did have a couple of steps on him, and it's not hard to do that. What he did is the play fake worked very well. However, they stuffed Testament just long enough to keep him from getting behind the linebackers with a clear vision for Zorn to hit. Zorn played two years at Cal Poly, his junior and senior years. He's never played for the same coach two years in a row until he went to Seattle. This is his third year under Jack Patera. Second down, 10 for the Seahawks. That pass is complete to Sam McCullough at the 34-yard line. Very close to the first down. This is another one of those six-inch jobs. First down, they say. Seattle under 34. Time remaining in the game. Five minutes. Five to go. 16 to 14, Oakland. And Oakland, <laughs> the Oakland win leaves them nine and four, a game ahead of Denver. A Seattle win would put Denver and Oakland in a tie at eight and five and put Seattle one game behind them at seven and six. And somebody that's now eight and five is going to lose a couple games of their last three. Very big game for, for Seattle. Zorn making the testament. Shoots it to the sideline to Smith. 
Smith stays in bounds and fights his way out on the 43-yard line of the Seahawks, where Monty Jackson, ex of the Los Angeles Rams, drove him out. They're a yard short of a first down, and Zorn is going to work with his left-handed magic again. He was trying to go down the field to Sam McCollum. However, he was very well covered by Monty Jackson. You haven't seen too many people catch the ball over the middle today either. Tatum's been roaming around pretty close. The free agent is quite a leader. Second down, a foot to go. And there is encroachment on Sistrunk unless he was drawn off. We've had only one penalty in the second half. Sistrunk leaned over and touched the offensive lineman. But he may have been drawn off. He was. Otis Sistrunk drawn off by a false move on the center, Art Kuhn. Who's playing in place of the injured Yarno. 35-14 in the fourth period. New England over Baltimore. New England on their way to their 10th win against just three losses. False start. Number 61, offense. Second down. Well, it could be anybody in there. However, this one happened to be on Tom Lynch. Lynch, the left guard. So they move the ball back now to the 38-yard uh, line. 38 and a half. It'll be second down. Five to go for the Seahawks. Five secondary backs in there for the Raiders. Villapiano. Taking a blitz, he's not coming. Look at Don't this. Keep the ball, and he's hit down by Villapiano on the 40-yard line. Actually, that play was pretty well blocked, too, Kurt. But you know Villapiano's been looking for it, looking for it, and looking for it. We may even get a chance to see his attention stay on Zorn. As he goes back, okay, Zorn gets away from Lynch, gets on... Excuse me, Villapiano gets away from Lynch and gets on Zorn quick, and now they've got a third down four. McCullum is out. Duke Ferguson is in for the Seahawks. He may run that play again. Third down and four from the Seattle 40. Out he goes to Testament over his head. Willie Hall is chasing Testament. Seattle. I don't see anybody coming off the field either for Seattle's offensive unit. Well, they may go for it. McCollum's coming back on. A wide receiver. I think it's a good idea. Seattle has, has made judgment on what their chances of winning this ball game are. They don't think they're quite as good personnel-wise as Oakland. They know they have to take chances and come up with big plays to beat them. They've given themselves a chance, and I think it's a good play. The score is 16 to 14. Oakland has just gone ahead with a 58-yard drive and a 31-yard pass Stabler to Casper. Fourth and four for Seattle from their 40-yard line. The crowd roaring on their feet. The fate by Zorn. Zorn throws. Knocked down. Knocked down by Lester Hayes, the young cornerback who came all the way across the field. And is he excited? Well, he's got good reason to be. He knows he was fooled, and he was really fooled when they scored their second touchdown by Steve Largent. This time he had about a 30-yard area to cover. He covered it. Zorn threw a good pass, however. All for naught as Lester Hayes came in and broke it up. Nobody likes to be the GOAT when you come out and be the hero. pattern across the field. So the Raiders stop them and take over just short of the Seattle 40-yard line. And the time now is three and a half to play. Oakland leading 16 to 14. Stabler to Van Egan. Van Egan at the 40. Rumbles to the 35. Bumped out of bounds by John Harris. He has the first down. Let's check Van Egan's running today. He came into this game with 847 yards. He has 52 yards. It's on the 30-yard line, a 10-yard gain of Seattle. Oakland's ball first down. 325 to play. When he went out of bounds, the clock stopped. 
They just got Harold Hart off the field. They'd have had 12 men on there. Whittington makes his cut, and he's hit there by number 27, Autry Beeman, who held him around the ankle. Stopped him on the 26-yard line, a four-yard gain for the rookie Whittington from SMU. And now Hart replaces Whittington. Mickey Marvin may be the best second-year lineman in the game of football, but Steve Sylvester has come on and really filled his shoes admirably because he's come out and led plays, allowed Whitman to pick up yards time and again running wide. He's been able to get on those contained men, those strong safeties and cornerbacks. He's done a fine job. There's your time moving. Second down, six. That's Harold Hart. Up shot blocking for him. Hart driven down on the 21-yard line by Keith Butler, the right linebacker, and John Harris, the free safety. What a block by Upshaw out in front. Just run behind the numbers to the left, 63 and 78. And they're doing it now. They've been doing it for years here. And we have two minutes. We have two minutes and 38 seconds to go. When I look in that huddle, nobody looks too comfortable, however. Well, they knew they were going to have a real test today. It's on the 21 of Seattle. Oakland now would like to move in and grab another score and try and sew this up. Stover's got the ball. Oh, oh, he's wide open. And it's deflected. He didn't see or get the ball to him in time. Casper was wide open in the end zone. And they got the ball to him late. Beeman recovered and slapped it away. I think what happened, Kurt, is Stabler saw Casper out there so alone, he just wanted to make sure he hit him. And Dave Brown came over from his corner position, made a good play on the ball, and almost picked it off. Banasak replaces Van Egan. 2.33 to play. 16 to 14, Oakland ahead. You're telling me they're going for this fourth and one. Fourth down and a yard to go. Making a play out of Seattle's book. And they do not have it. Harold Hart. Sort of got tripped up there. And a stop. Seattle holds. And the Seahawks have a chance now. And all they want to do is work within field goal range. Well, they have, you know, Oakland has put themselves in a second-guessing position because a three-pointer by Arrow Man would have put, put, a, put Seattle out of a field goal opportunity to win the ball game. Now they are definitely in one. They must have felt that Arrow Man's either his leg is hurt or something. fans that have just left the New England Baltimore game. We're here in the last two minutes, 27 seconds. This is Kurt Gowdy, John Brody from Oakland. A wild finish here. Seattle trailing by two. Jim Zorn fires, completes it to Steve Largent, his wide receiver. The top receiver in the American Conference has caught another one. He's caught a touchdown pass today. And the ball will be spotted down at the 26-yard line of the Seattle Seahawks. Time stop, 2.18 to play. Both coaches, arms crossed, Jack Patera. Somehow Jack Patera reminds me of Raymond Floyd, the professional golfer, with a little more, with a little more serious face. It is second down, four to go for the Seahawks. They have three wide receivers on the field. Rabel, Largent and Ferguson. Great protection. There it is, the Rabel, a little bit behind him. Ball is behind his right shoulder, and he couldn't hold on to it. And the action level is extreme right now. Rabel, just after he missed the ball, got hit. Neither of the defenders could tell whether he caught it or not. He was hit there by Phillips and Tatum who were jackknifing him in that open area. And boy, the going gets rough in that middle, as we've mentioned. Both Phillips and Tatum are exceptional hitters. Rabel did, did beat them both to the ball. However, once it left, you all be careful. They're working on Steve Rabel, who played his college ball at Georgia Tech. He has caught a 38-yard touchdown pass today in the first period. Let's review the scoring. For those of you who were not with us earlier, 
80-yard drive by Seattle in the first period was capped off. A 38-yard pass, Jim Zorn to Steve Rabel, 341 to play. 7-0 Seattle, first period. Oakland came back. A 43-yard, seven-play drive. Van Egan plowing over four yards out. The point was good to tie it. Then with a minute three to go in the first half, a 26-yard field goal by Arrowman made a 10-7 Oakland at the halftime. In the third period, scoreless, and now we have other fans joining us from the Cincinnati-Houston game. And uh, a pass with 12.20 to play in the fourth period of 27 yards from Zorn to Largent put Seattle ahead, and then Oakland came roaring back on a 31-yard pass from Stabler to Casper. Same old Oakland story. Right down the field, they swept four plays, 58 yards uh, to come from behind and take the lead. And uh, they're still working out there on Steve Rabel, the receiver. Jack Patera looking up. Hopes his boy's not injured. That's Herrera, the field goal kicker behind him. There's the final. Houston had to come from behind. They were trailing 10 0 and defeated Cincinnati 17 to 10 to run their record this year to nine wins and four losses. We did a game here earlier, John Brody and myself where Houston was leading Oakland 17 to 7 on the four yard line of the Raiders late in the third period. Earl Campbell fumbled. It was scooped up, run back by Phillips, 96 yards for a touchdown, and the Raiders went on to win it. That's one game Houston would like to have back. They're still moaning about that one. Third down and four for the Seahawks from their 26. No flags are down. The pass is to Smith for a first down. Sherm Smith caught that ball. They just sent him out enough to get the first down. You know what amazes me is they do not feature their tight end, Kurt, and even though they still hit their backs. Okay, we're coming up to the two-minute warning. When we come back, Seattle's ball first down in their 34. The score, 16 to 14, Oakland. Is your gas doing everything it could for your car? Be sure with STP gas treatment, because it really helps. To keep a carburetor clean, fight rust in the fuel system, it even helps get water out of your gas tank. And it's easy to use. STP gas treatment, it really helps. So try it. Yeah, for my car, it's STP. Wherever you may roam, you'll find this near your home. Oh, hi, it's me again, posting and tasting more posters. This time it's for the first annual Delco battery sale. AC Delco is making it possible for you to buy a Freedom battery at a special sale price. Thanks, Delco. Wherever you see this poster, look for it in, uh, look for it in your neighborhood for a great price on a battery you can trust. Thanks, Delco. Well, you'll be saying thanks, Delco, too. Due to the length of today's game, Sperry's NFL report will not be seen. Right after this game, stay tuned for the wonderful world of Disney, followed by the NBC big event, Fire in the Sky, on most of these NBC stations. On the West Coast, most mountain time zone, the wonderful world of Disney, NBC's big event will be seen at the regular time. 34-yard line of Seattle, first down. The Seahawks are trailing 16 to 14, two minutes to play. Largent coming back to the ball in motion. Lawrence pitch is complete to Largent at the 40-yard line of Seattle. He was hit hard there by 47 Charlie Phillips. If Oakland hangs on, there will be a full game ahead of Denver. For, in first place, they will have nine wins and four losses. Denver's eight and five. If Seattle rallies a win, Denver, Oakland will be in a tie. Seattle will be only one game behind. The pass flipped away by Rod Martin, number 50. Oh. Who already has intercepted a pass today. If he's not in that Pro Bowl this year as an outside linebacker, Brody and I'll eat these monitors in front of us. Oh, I just said not eat mine, but I do think you'll be in it. Uh... We're going to pause briefly, John, for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. You're watching the Seahawks on KING TV, Seattle. Kurt Gowdy and John Brody, the ball's on the Seattle 40. 
Third down, three to go for Seattle. One minute, 34 to go. The Raiders leading by two. Ted Henrich has had two takeaways today, an interception and a fumble recovery. Jim, Jim Zorn gives the ball to Smith. Smith may have the first down. Sure, Sherm Smith rolling over to the right side. He got that one, but that's by about another one of those six inch to a foot jobs. They're moving the chains as fast as they can. Seattle has only one timeout left. Oh, Seattle's already got the ball in play. Zorn throws incomplete. That time to Benjamin, Tony Benjamin of Duke, number 31. And the clock stops with a minute 12 to go. Mike McCoy again made a fine play, Kurt. He has really put pressure on up the middle in a very difficult situation. He's kept Zorn from, from doing a lot of scrambling up the middle. He's made 12 yards and two scrambles in the, up, up through him. He's been all over, all over Zorn all day long, and that time Zorn had pretty good attention just to throw the ball at all. Final scores you're seeing. Buffalo clubbing the Giants, the Jets over Miami, Atlanta nipped New Orleans, Minnesota Green Bay played in overtime and wound up in a tie. Neither team could score in the overtime. Second down, 10 for the Seahawks. There he got a first down. Oh, that's something. Doesn't he remind you of talking and running around back there? He does, and he's got a stronger arm. That Francis has after playing 18 years, but his arm ranks with any, any quarterback in the league. They're on the 43 yard line of the Raiders, the first down. 42 seconds to go. Jordan looks and fires, and it is incomplete. He was trying to hit Duke Ferguson, number 89. But they clock, uh, stopped the clock with 39 seconds. Kansas City stopped San Diego's winning streak, 23 0. The Bears, second in a row, they beat Tampa Bay 14-3. The Cardinal winning streak stopped today by the Eagles. 14-10, Eagles go 8-5 now. New England rolling over Baltimore 35-14. Houston beating Cincinnati 17-10. That sets up two outstanding matchups on NBC. Late games, Pittsburgh and Houston, New England and Dallas next Sunday. The problem we have right now is those defensive linemen for Oakland are tired. It's a real burden on the defensive backs. Crowd roaring here. Sellout. Oakland Coliseum. Zorn back. The pass. Deflected by 39. Willie Hall. He got his mitt on it. Deflected it away. Third down 10. It was meant for Duke Ferguson. It's still no bargain. They have to stop him two more times. You know they're going up in the air four times. Plenty of time to get the ball 30 yards down the field and kick a field goal. This time, Willie Hall was in just the right place at the right time. Third and 10. 35 seconds to go. Herrera getting warmed up in case he gets the shot. Jim Zorn today is 22 out of 42, 254 yards, two touchdown passes. A player that was not even drafted and now has developed into one of the bright young stars of the National Football League. You never know. You can't open their heads and look at their hearts. As Zorn's asking for the big crowd to quiet down. They're used to these wild finishes here. I think I've done personally about 10 or 15 of them in the house of trills that yeah. <laughs> it's the house of trills but that play actually helped zorn because i don't think he liked what he saw defensively he utilized the screaming of the crowd to help him since he doesn't have the timeouts he'd like to have how about new england and Oakland here in the playoffs and how about miami and Oakland here in the playoffs all right third down and ten zorn has a receiver ferguson and Ferguson wrestled around. One yard Rock short. Keeps mo moving. It may be short. They're down to 22 seconds, 23 seconds, and Seattle rushes in and has called their last timeout. And the big thing about that is Charlie Phillips just had it, just might have saved the ball game. Timeout. Wait.
question as Zorn talks to Patera, the coaching staff. Fourth down and about a half yard to go on the 34-yard line of Oakland. Seattle is out of timeouts. A timeout that they took in the third period hurts them right now when they got a mix-up of the line of scrimmage. They've taken two confusion timeouts, Kurt. This timeout is their last one, as you mentioned. I think they have to throw for it on fourth down. Following our game, stay tuned for the wonderful world of Disney, which will be followed by the NBC big event, Fire in the Sky, on most of these NBC stations. On the West Coast and most mountain time zone stations, the wonderful world of Disney and NBC's big event will be seen at their regular time. The executive producer of NBC's NFL football is Don Olmeyer. Telecast of today's game has been produced by Roy Hammerman. Directed by Harry Coyle. Now they're in the huddle. Technical director Ray Fidelsky. The associate director Jim Marcioni. All right, they're going to go for the first down. And they give the ball to Al Hunter, who's through to the 28-yard line. Time moving down to 15. They're doing the wise thing. They've got plenty of timing. Throw it out, stop the clock. They're down to nine seconds. They throw it out of bounds. They stop the clock with seven to go. Seven seconds to go. And the ball, the line of scrimmage, is the Oakland Raider 28. And here comes Herrera out. He will have probably a 45-yard attempt. They did several things correctly, Kurt. Number one, they picked up four, five, six yards. That was an important thing to do. Then they all lined up. He got the ball out. They do have a chance. 46-yard attempt by Aflin Herrera that could win the game for Seattle. Seven seconds to play. The Raiders trying to distract him. Here's the kick. The kick is up, 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 up. It is. away by being the first team to beat Oakland twice in the same season in 13 years. We'll be back in a minute. I want you to meet my new business partner. He's a management genius, a whiz with figures, and he doesn't cost me much. Here he is. Not him. <laughs> Sparrow Univac's BC7 computer. What I really like about BC is he speaks and understands English, so we don't need a professional programmer. Inventory, please. It only took us a few days to get to know each other. And now he gives me any fact I need in seconds. Inventory or payroll, order entry, anything. He doesn't need a big office or special air conditioning. He even has his own health plan. If BC doesn't feel good, I just call these guys. Sperry Univac. What a partner. <laughs> He's teaching me more about my business than I ever knew before. Hey, partner, how do you like your coffee? With or without. <laughs> Sperry, making machines do more so man can do more. Three seconds to go. A quiet crowd at the Oakland Coliseum. Young Jim Zorn took his club. They had stopped the Raiders on fourth down on the 20-yard line of Seattle, and he moved them downfield desperately against the clock. Only one timeout on that drive they had remaining. They used the clock beautifully. Finally took their time out, got into position, and Herrera hit the 46-yard field goal to put him ahead. And credit, along with Jim Zorn and the rest of his group, Jerry Rome, Howard Mudd, Jack Patera, Andy McDonald, these guys have really coached those guys offensively. They squibbed the kick down, and the tackle, the game is over. The game is over. Seattle has dumped Oakland. Final score, 17 to 16. Seattle upsets the Raiders. Kurt Gowdy and John Brody hope you enjoy it. Now stay tuned for the wonderful world of Disney, already in progress, followed by NBC's big event, Fire in the Sky, after these local messages. On the West Coast and most mountain time zone stations, the wonderful world of Disney and NBC's big event will be seen at their regular time. Super laughs and super surprises on Super Dad tonight. Ooh. Ah. West. 
western airlines the only way to fly. <laughs>